Hello, everybody. Welcome to the start of a, well, not really a start. We've already had one race going, but the second race for today, this lovely summer weekend. I've got, uh, my name is Dynam, and I've got two wonderful commentators with me today. Uh, first up, we have Greta Eisvixen. Greta, how are you doing today? Hello, I'm good. Thank you. Awesome. And alongside Greta, we also have the the one, the only uh, Nick Pixels. Hello there. Hello there. And the Pixels is plural. Yes, it is. One one man, many Pixels. This next exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So true. But we're not here to talk about DPI or how many Pixels we have on the screen. We're here to talk about these two runners today, uh, who will be competing for. Uh, Round three advancement and possibly also second place best time. We have Leggy Starscream, who has a very solid personal best of a 315, has been running, I believe, has been running Pikachu as of late. I believe she'll also be running Pikachu today. Um, and we also have Zimlik, uh, who joined the race through an open invite from GDQ, put up a very solid tournament time of a sub 330. So very much looking forward to how these two runners are going to be performing today. Greta, Nick, what do you have to say about these two runners? I am excited. <laughs> I haven't seen too much of Zimlik, so I'm excited to see what he gets up to, what he ends up doing, how it goes. I got to say, uh, their race PBs are very close to, you know, like their actual legit PBs. So I think they'll put up uh, some good contention, some very good content to see tonight. It could PB for real. Yeah. It could be PB for real. We could have another race where all of the runners in the race PB, and that would be exceptionally hype. In my That'd opinion. be some content for real. <laughs> Truly. We do see Leggy on Pikachu and Zimlik on Eevee. So we've got a head-to-head -head Pikachu versus Eevee competition. Also, we've Ooh. got girl one versus boy one. So. Yeah, simply going for the boy one. I no know hesitation. who I'm rooting for. I also <laughs> know who you're rooting for. <laughs> but we're not going to be biased commentators today whatsoever. Am I right? Nah. Right, right, right? 100%. We'll see what happens. I don't know. We'll see. Depends on the decisions they make. We've already had one extremely important one. <laughs> exactly. We're already split up the even... timeline. One might even say two, depending on uh, if you're a version biased, which I definitely am not. True. I only own one of these versions. I have both of them. But I don't know if I love them equally or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to put it. I, uh, I actually don't own any versions. Uh, somebody lent me a copy once, and they never asked for it. Like, <laughs> so... Is still under my care, and that's how I got my Eevee knowledge. <laughs> Heck yeah. More than qualified to be on the on the cast and catch with us today. Glad you're here. So I had to put in my curriculum. Exactly. <laughs> Toss that one on your resume. Hell yeah. In the meantime, uh, our racers just did their options menu. Very typical stuff, you know. We're, we're doing a speed run, so we do want the text to be set to fast. And, and skip cutscenes. Yeah, turning off battle animations, battle style to set, and we're skipping movies. There's not too many movies, but they're they're kind of long, so we definitely want to skip the ones that do exist. Look, yeah. how many times have we seen the Gen 1 Kanto plot? Like, we don't need to see it again, right? <laughs> plot, yeah. Yeah. Hard air quotes for plot. <laughs> Hard air quotes, yeah. Like, like the best you can get is, like, the rocket plot portion and then after that yeah. you just you just go on your merry way and as a uh, 10 year old kid beating up the elite four yeah, and the cube bone stuff is pretty cute but yeah agreed it is but we'll get to pokemon tower when we get there oh uh, it'll be a journey it shall be but the first step on the journey is to actually get a pokemon and here we have both of our runners catching their starter uh, at least for Eevee, you can't really tell what nature it will be due to all Eevees having 27 CP. However, we notice that Leggy has 27 Ooh. CP on her Pikachu, which means that uh, 27 CP is absolutely neutral, which means that uh, natures in this game 
provide a positive stat bonus to one stat and a negative 10% uh, detriment to another. Leggy has no such thing. So we already know that Leggy's Pikachu is runnable. So that is a very good start for Leggy, knowing that she will not need to either deal with minus attack Pika, not need to deal with minus special attack Pika, or not even have to load a backup, which is very solid. Like any old Pokemon speedrun, uh, the starter is extremely important, even for the games where the starter is not like the main Pokemon all the way through. Yeah, people reset over stats and natures all the time. Uh, thankfully, the starters all have 31 perfect IVs. Uh, I could explain IVs, but I think the viewers are already experienced with that. Um, so the only thing that runners have to worry about is nature, pretty much. I don't know if there are any other factors. Uh, you guys can correct me on that. Uh, and the thing about Let's Go is that, well, since it's sort of like an, I guess, mechanical adaptation, it borrows a lot of mechanics from Pokemon Go. Uh, Pokemon have CP, which is like a relative way of how you can tell their power without having to look at their stats. And well, like Dynam just, just explained, the 27 CP uh, was a telltale for Pikachu having a neutral nature. In fact, you have just seen Gimlik, uh, Simlik, sorry, <laughs> check his uh, Eevee's nature, but Leggy didn't have to do that because she already knows uh, what her Pikachu stats are going to be like. Yeah, speaking of Zimlux nature, we did see Naughty, which is going to be plus Ooh. attack minus special defense, which I believe is a pretty solid Eevee nature. Has to, that be the best one. has to be like the best one, because Eevee has like cracked special defense for no reason, and you don't really <laughs> need special defense. Exactly. You're you're more often worried about seeing things like minus defense just because Eevee needs to tank a lot of mid-game hits, as well as minus speed, which allows uh which forces Eevee to not go first in a turn essentially for a lot of fights but this is a very very solid start for for both runners in fact yeah early game is always fun there are a lot of micro interactions uh that the runners do and it's fun to see who gets ahead for like half a second and then you know see the difference go back the other way it's always fun yeah, Leggy and Zim, like both dodging a couple Pokemon in that first fast grass. Uh, you can actually just like kind of leave your starter behind on one of these ledges if you make a sharp enough turn. I know uh, a couple of other commentators and runners have noticed that more often than not. But we are going to see both these runners teleport back to the lab. Um, no, no walk of shame today. Shoutouts to Joker. <laughs> I believe it was Joker. Or maybe it was Pokemon. Anyway. Probably. All to say <laughs> that our first rival battle is coming up right now. Um, the rival will have the opposite starter of which version you're currently in. So Leggy will be up against an Eevee, which uh, due to being a neutral nature is going to always be a four turn fight. Whereas Zimlik's Eevee is going to be up against a Pikachu, has a little bit less defense. So we might see anywhere between a two turn due to a plus attack nature to a four turn depending on how many growls we see yeah, also, you can sim. also die to this fight and i think it's actually faster but not fast enough to where you're gonna like sit around and try to die there is one thing against simlik and that is that pikachu has static therefore no i'm just kidding there's no abilities in this game <laughs> no abilities whatsoever shout out to synchronize and celadon yep We've got Eevee taking Pika to half. There is a Growl, so likely three turn over on Zimlik's screen. So a little bit ahead in terms of that. But of course, this is seven minutes in. Many, many things will be happening throughout the next three or so hours of the game. I don't know. I think it's already decided. It's all over. I don't know. Caroline, <laughs> I heard that Caroline is a major decider in, and has been in recent races, so... We'll just have to see how it goes. Beyond the, you know, the static meme, that bit I did, um, there is an actual real chance of getting paralyzed by Thundershock uh, if you play with Eevee, and it's uh, very unfortunate that that happens. Thankfully, it did not in this race. I know we have a tutorial about uh, playing with your Pokemon and, like, petting them. We don't care. We just want to move. 
shout outs to Aspect who actually utilized the costume feature in their run. <laughs> Now, I think these gamers, I think these gamers today are going all in for it. I I would agree. <laughs> Another differential that we'll see between Pika and Eevee, uh, just due to the way that uh, the Pika and XP works out, Pikachu will be able to level up on this Rattata fight, whereas Eevee will either level up on a Catch Preforest or on the Cat Pika fight uh, following. So we will get to see what Leggy's first AV or Awakening value is. We won't bore you to death on details because you've heard this enough already, but AVs basically are a weighted stat value. Uh, that one going into attack is very solid. Definitely want to see as many early attack AVs on Pikachu as possible in order to hit some solid early game ranges. AVs. I wouldn't say they're a run breaker, but yeah. We are always hounding, always watching where those AVs go. Um, this is kind of where I failed my assignment. I didn't really do my homework on AVs. Um, I believe they're random, but but kind of not. But actually, yeah. <laughs> um, they're a mess. But just know that it's just extra stats. Uh, and yeah, we want them all to go to attack. Uh, speed on EV, I feel. That might be wrong. But yes. yep. Yeah, speed on EV is pretty decent. Uh, to elaborate just a little bit more, uh, when I say weighted towards a specific stat, uh, Leggy being a neutral nature means that there's an equivalent roll between HP through speed, essentially, and then whatever Leggy's each's characteristic is, um, we don't know that because uh, I believe she hasn't checked it because she knew it was neutral, um, gets an extra two bonus points essentially towards that specific stat. Uh, seeing Eevee level up to 6 here, we get another attack AV on Eevee, so Ooh. got some strong stuff coming out from, from both starters. I am doing my best to put these in a spreadsheet, so we'll see how the AVs spread uh, continues throughout the run. I will keep you all posted if I can keep track. Both of our runners just making their way downtown, walking fast. Pidgeys flying fast. <laughs> They're homebound. I'm sorry. True. Don't apologize, that was great. <laughs> uh, Leggy encountering a Weedle, but choosing to run away from it. Yeah, uh, choose to run away from it. Do do too. Um, if one of you would like to explain how uh, the item that they're going to be picking up soon, the lure, works in this game. So it does a lot of things, but one of the important things, well, they're all important. Um, Pokemon are going to spawn more often, and they will also be one level higher than like the normal maximum level in a typical area. And both of those things are good, and we want that. So. It's basically like an anti repel. You put it on, more mods <laughs> spawn, better mods spawn, and more frequently. So exactly. you see yeah. already picked it up, immediately use the item. And that helps because we try our best to get things that are close ish to their evolution level. So the higher they are, the closer they are. So it works out. Yeah, and the higher the level that they are, the more XP that we get due to. Uh, experience in this game being weighted much, much, much more heavily towards catches than it is in towards trainer battles, as you had mentioned before. Uh, very analogous to Pokemon Go in the sense that the devs of this game really want you to catch Pokemon. And how do we reward <laughs> you for catching Pokemon? Have all the XP from from catching. Simblick Vane, very patient with a Caterpie, paid off, got an excellent throw, first throw. Um, yeah. Since, uh, well, like Dynam was saying, um, the game wants you to, wants to reward you for catching Pokemon. And in order to incentivize that, in order to catch them better, and in order to, like, you know, emulate Pokemon Go, um, you get rewarded for doing certain things, such as having a good throw. A good throw means throwing the ball under the colored circle that shrinks. There you saw an excellent with the Weedle. Um, if you catch a Pokemon on the first throw, uh, you get even more experience, another multiplier, and another multiplier if the Pokemon is glowing. By a glowing Pokemon, we refer to these Pokemon that has have like these uh, blue or red auras. It, 
doesn't really mean anything mechanically. This just means that either a Pokemon is tiny or big, and that means more experience. For some reason, I don't know the lore behind that, but it's, it just does. <laughs> because why not? Sure, because why not? Exactly. And yeah. like Greta mentioned uh, earlier, um, you know, catching a Caterpie after the lore gave us a Caterpie, well, sorry, gave Simblick a Caterpie that was level 7. Only one catch for it to evolve. And big bam boom, pretty good. Yeah, I like to imagine, well, I don't like to imagine, but I know in Pokemon Go, there are curveball throws that get you like extra experience. And oh, I yeah. Just, oh, yeah. Just imagine <laughs> with the Joy-Con controls <laughs> how that would go. Just fl just just grab it by this by by this trap and flail it. <laughs> Listen, we've seen way too many instances of Joy-Con moments in this journey. <laughs> Let's no curveballs today. Just straight shot throws or very simple throws to the left or to the right. Hopefully, our runners' Joy Cons are nice and fully charged and good to go. And they cooperate. <laughs> Both Pikachu and Eevee learning Double Kick, uh, at, albeit at slightly different levels. Pika learning it at level 9, whereas Eevee learns Double Kick as lo at level 10, which is really important to get Eevee to level 10 before uh, the first major battle of this run being Brock. Uh, Eevee needing it much more than Pikachu, as you'll see Leggy uh, currently does have an Oddish, I believe. Um, so she'll be going and grabbing this rat. This little uh <laughs> the rat just, does not want to be caught exactly a little scurrying away but we'll have to get into the pokeball to ensure that oddish gets to a solid level to try and get a one shot on the onyx coming up oh something else i don't think we mentioned um with two controller catches it will give you more experience as well and also you have a higher catch rate so even though there's like that kind of annoying animation it is more than worth it in the end so we'll be seeing that pretty much every single catch very true i was not around during the the very dark ages of <laughs> 1c catching yeah. and upwards of 20 breakout string run i am thankful for the research that has been put into this game uh by anubis and company uh, to yes. bring us greater catch rates, greater sanity when running this game. It's it's fantastic as a, a newer generation Let's Go Runner, I will yeah. say. And one controller was also like required in the past. You weren't allowed to use both controllers, but those days are also long gone. So As they should be. <laughs> as they should, yeah. More, uh, you, you said required, I would say enforced. I mean, I, I know that sounds kind of like inflammatory, but yeah, the, the rule previously was that, yep, one player, one controller. And yeah, like Dino mentioned, thankfully, there's some research that has been done that proves that two controller is pretty much always better. And we welcome it because it's faster and more entertaining, if I do say so myself. Uh, one thing I don't think we'd mentioned yet is why we are bothering catching Pokemon beyond EXP, right? Ah, yes, very true. That is a very important thing to note in this particular speedrun. Uh, as you may see, there is a catch tracker that is currently on screen, Zumluk having six current catches out of 50, Leggy having seven current catches out of 50. Every gym in this game has a prerequisite requirement in order to enter, whether that be showing your favorite grass or water Pokemon to Brock, whether that be being level 15 for Misty, or ne needing to have 50 unique Pokemon entered into your Pokedex by the time you reach Koga's gym. Otherwise, uh, you will be running uh, Spider's favorite category, Kicked by Koga, <laughs> which is not the category of this, of this race by any means necessary. So as you'll see, the runners will be doing a little bit of a balancing act between moving forward through story progression and also trying to get to that solid 50 Pokemon for the finish line. Yeah, the real incentive for catching things is so you can beat the game. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> Otherwise, you get locked and you can't progress. Um, but in my opinion, this is... Well, catching Pokemon, you know, tracking them is 
a huge part of the speedrun, as you might have already noticed, but in my opinion, it's what makes the speedrun so fun, and mm -hmm. why exactly the reason why Let's Go has thrived so much and stayed relevant for such a long time in the speedrunning sphere. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's, it's fun, it's difficult, it's kind of scary, um, people will be making decisions on the fly, adapting constantly, it, it's a treat to see. It's not, you know, oh, I'ma just use my starter and dump all the XP on them and just move forward and mash through text and, oh, I reached the champion. It's a very involved speedrun. Exactly. Uh, noting on Leggy's screen, uh, unfortunately having a little bit of a rough time with the Onyx. Uh, did not get the one shot on the Onyx due to Otish being level 9, which is not necessarily guaranteed. Uh, with Absorb. Also getting Headbutt flinched twice, which is really unfortunate due to uh, Headbutt being a 30% flinch chance move. Uh, so getting it twice on Brock, not exactly what you want to see, but definitely can make the time for that uh, in the upcoming portions of the run. should also mention uh, there was already a pretty big difference between PK and Eevee that you might have seen if you were paying attention to that fight. Uh, Simlik took down Brock with just uh, his Eevee, while Leggy had to get help from her Oddish. Yeah, Pika has a, typically speaking, Pika has a much better time with the fight just due to Oddish having solid special attack compared to Geodude and Onyx's very, very poor special defense. Eevee, I believe, needs to double kick the Geodude twice in order to take it down, followed up by a tail whip to reduce Onyx's defense by one stage, followed up by two more double kicks uh, in order to take down the giant rock snake. Yeah, unfortunately for Eevee, uh, Oddish is version exclusive to Pika, so you can't do that even if you want to. Sad. Right. Yeah, Eevee cause... gets. Uh... Go Sorry, ahead. you can take that. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Eevee gets Bell Sprout, and Bell Sprout is bad because. Because Vine Whip, which Bellsprout has, compared to Oddish's Absorb, Vine Whip is a physical move. Onyx has very high physical defense, uh, so the two just kind of meet each other in the middle and say, hey, all right, we'll, we'll take you down in two to three turns compared to Oddish having the ability to potentially one-shot the Onyx. Yeah, Brock has been left behind. We are heading out going through Route 3 and Route 4, and soon to be our first dungeon of the game. Yes, but first... But first, <laughs> but first but you gotta first. make a pit stop. Sushi. Yep. <laughs> sushi, oh, I love sushi. Chat, do you love sushi? Let's make a poll in the chat. <laughs> sushi fan, yeah or nah? This is this is giving me flashbacks of like people debating like what's oh. the most edible Pokemon. Oh god. <laughs> it's definitely not Sandshrew. Sandshrew has a very tough exterior. Uh, <laughs> Sandshrew being one of the potential bonus Pokemon catches that you can get on this route for Pikachu specifically. For Eevee, it's limited to really only Ekans and between the two, the occasional rare char. And then Pikachu also has the option to pick up a the wild child of Minky here. Uh, but grabbing the Sandshrew, really good for that early... Uh, Early solidification of Leggy's catch route for sure. Yeah, that Sandshrew was like unexpectedly far away from the grass. It was on a trip, a journey. <laughs> he heard sushi Sandshrew. and uh, he came out. <laughs> okay, but beyond the the sushi meme, um, yeah, if you, you, I'm sure the chat has played Gen One or Gen Three, uh, and that Pokemon Center specifically. There's a fisherman selling a magic card for the low sum of 500 pocky dollars and let's go we are never going to use this magic card but hey we we pay money and it's very we quick get, to get yeah it's very quick to get there you go boom already register bam bam and in, in three clicks you got it uh pay to much, win exactly you'll pretty much see 99 percent of runners uh going for the magic card the one percent is people that forget <laughs> and, and then they do Gyarados alt main. Shout out to Head Bob. Shout outs. Little Zubat action on Simlick's screen. Probably gonna run away from it. Somehow the devs decided to make Zubat 
Zubat just as annoying in this game as it was in previous games. Uh, even though there are no like random encounters per se, uh, things can spawn very close to or on top of you, and they absolutely will, uh, especially in close corridors and such. Uh, but Zimlock opting to run away from the Zubat, knowing that uh, he will get a one closer to evolution later on, and solid Clefairy, glowing Geodude, it's definitely yeah. what you want to see to boost that XP. This room is stacked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nick, as you had mentioned before, swapping over to Great Balls just to increase that catch rate with the with two controls on the Clefairy. As long as that Clefairy gets its attack cycle off, uh, Great should be okay for this. Great should be good, yeah. Yeah, should go in the ball. Uh, Clefairy not staying put in typical Clefairy fashion. Exactly. Loves to give it the whole, the whole hop around action. Leggy uh, going to not immediately go into the ladder. Uh, Pikachu tends to fight this Sandshrew Trainer first just because you already have Oddish out in the front of your party. And as I mentioned before, Oddish is absorbed being a special attack against Sandshrew's poor special defense man, means that will take it out in one turn. Uh, didn't note Oddish's speed. Uh, the Sandshrew does have 12 speed and if you either lose a speed tie or do not outspeed it. Uh, doesn't matter here, uh, but you do have the... You basically can get pocket sanded and lower your accuracy and it can kind of cringe, but none of that for Lucky today, thankfully. And Simblake on what I'd like to call a stretch break, uh, having two Pokemon evolve at once. A um, lot of text, a lot of screens we have to move through, but hey, it's, uh, it's part of the game. <laughs> Yeah, I'm evolutions sure kind of take forever in this game. Yeah, I'm very sure that plenty of people would have a way to completely skip these, but it's a necessary evil. Also, do want to note, this is very minor, uh, but Leggy, after having beat that youngster, uh, she was rewarded with three Pokeballs. Um, NPCs in this game, not only do they give you money, they also hand you free stuff. And that comes in, hand, comes in handy, makes shopping trips not really as frequent or critical as a typical Pokemon speedrun. It's good to have. I always like to note that when dealing with Let's Go, because it, as far as I know, it's a thing that is unique to this game. Yeah, that comes in very important later, especially in Rock Tunnel. Uh, some of those items we do end up using throughout the run. For example, a trainer, I believe it's Ace Trainer Sophia in, in Rock Tunnel will give us five Ultra Balls, and those are absolutely essential to finishing out the, the mid to end game cash route uh, as we get further into the game. And we love any NPC that gives us free lures. <laughs> I don't know if... I don't know if NPCs get flown in this game. At least not the not any of the ones that we end up fighting. Oh no! Uh, any, okay, okay, not any of the ones we fight. I was like, wait, did I gaslight myself? Did I make that up? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's highly possible. Disinformation. Just, but at least not in this particular run. None of the traders that are routed in uh, to give us lures. One thing that is very interesting, I have been keeping track of these runners' uh, ABs, as I mentioned before, uh, weighted stat values uh, ranging from. HP to speed, you'll get uh, one for every level uh, throughout a 10 level cycle. Leggy's Pikachu so far has accrued three attack AVs out of six possible levels. So, very wow. good to be in position for uh, taking out a lot of solid ranges in Cerulean, including Misty Starmie. Whereas, uh, if any of. I didn't notice myself, but if any astute viewers had noticed. Uh, Zimlik's characteristics specifically. Uh, we have a naughty EV for Zimlik, which means plus attack minus special defense. However, Zimlik's EV has accrued three special defense AVs, which means uh, another uh, side part to natures, not really related, but related in part in this game, are characteristics in this game. Uh, they are attributed to one of the, the six stats, HP, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed. Normally, when distributing AVs uh, in, for example, a naughty nature EV, we'll never get a special defense AV. Instead, it will that stat will get redirected to its attack stat. However, the characteristic is based off of special defense, which is somewhat vain. 
Uh, so you do have a two and eight chance of rolling a special defense AV, and out of uh, six possible levels, uh, Zimlux EV has gained three in that stat. So very interesting. Is that double? Uh, I believe that should be double, considering the time. So we'll see Leggy probably marking uh, Jigglypuff, more than likely, or really any other Moonstone evolution. But she's just clearing out her party. She's caught everything that, needs, that she needs to catch, and that Moonstone will be very important for accruing one extra catch later on. Yeah, so what happened there is there are some items in this game that will respawn at midnight, but it's only roughly 50-50 for it to actually respawn. So what we did before the start of the run is set our timer, uh, our in-game clock, or I guess our system clock, and we picked up the first moonstone, and then at some point in there, the time rolled over to the next day, and then it, it spawned again for Leggy. Yeah, some behind-the-scenes magic going on there. Uh, usually when, well, Runners, of course, they're all in for the money here. They just want to go fast, whatever. Thankfully, both runners got pretty good starters. Uh, but yeah, usually while resetting attempts, runners will uh, have to reset and um, like reset the trick for the internal clock. Uh, Leggy found her Clefairy, it seems. And Clefairy, well... It's a little feisty. Is a little feisty, yeah. Also not behaving. Uh, but we like Clefairy, because, uh, like I said, even if the Moonstone trick doesn't work, runners will st always still have, like, one Moonstone minimum. Um, Clefairy, you catch it, you Moonstone it, you got two entries, you box it, all good. Definitely do not do that on Pika. Um, you can <laughs> like our, do that our on friend Edie. Joker showed us. <laughs> yeah. We do Edie, want that Moonstone yeah. later on. Eevee has no repercussions, really, for using the Moonstone, uh, albeit that... The reason why you save at least one Moonstone on Pika, Eevee has kind of incorporated that strat as well. We'll see that kind of in the mid game. Uh, but Pikachu definitely needs a partner Pokemon in the form of either Nido King or Nido Queen in order to make it through the mid game. Uh, just because Pika, being the little electric mouse that it is, uh, only really knows electric moves, maybe the occasional fighting, maybe the occasional normal move, doesn't have a lot of coverage. Uh, Eevee, uh, as we will see in the next couple of minutes, will get a insane array of moves to use throughout the rest of the run. Uh, Eevee's so dumb. Eevee, Eevee is... I wouldn't say Eevee's dumb. Eevee is versatile. That's the word I would probably use in this scenario. True, true. No, no, the, like, Eevee, the creature itself is versatile. <laughs> Eevee, the game, is dumb <laughs> for giving Eevee that versatility. Uh, but yeah, I completely forgot about Nita King. Thank you, co-commentators, for catching that. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. It's all good. That's what we're here for, to check each other. So I'm like picking up the Helix Fossil over the Dome Fossil. Bold choice. Optimal. Bold. Yeah, optimal to beat. <laughs> and going straight into the first of three Justin game sites. One, two, three. I think that's three, right? Wait, Jesse I, I, James are in this yes. game? <gasps> what? Oh yeah, surprise! This is the yellow remake. <laughs> yeah. Hello, hello, Jesse, <gasps> Jesse and James. Uh, this is the probably the one of the least scary Jesse and James fights there are out there. Oh, oh no, there's four. I've I've run this game so many times. How do I not remember there are four? <laughs> uh, that's what I don't know. Running this game does does things to a person, but does really good things as well. <laughs> anyway. Oh, yeah. Anyway, like in the typical anime fashion, Jesse and James will get in our way during the run. Uh, they try to mess with us, uh, fight. They're all double battles, which is, is cool. Like, yes, there's double battles in this game. Some. And, yeah, we beat them, and thankfully they don't do anything more than that. Um, yeah. Uh, in Let's Go Pikachu, they would try to steal, you know, our Pikachu, which... It's like canon compliant, but I guess uh, in Eevee, they're trying to steal the player character's Eevee, which I guess is Yeah, because the is fine. player's Eevee is overpowered and gets all these moves. And, 30, and 31 IVs, I never said, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Honestly, I'm pretty sure in this game, they're just in it for the fossils. They even, like, in the yeah, cutscene before this, they just 
send Meowth like, hey, go get the fossils over there. And Meowth's like, Meowth. Yeah, Meowth is like, losses. Meowth is like, I don't know how to talk in this game, oh, not Meowth like in the anime. <laughs> owned. Yeah, Zimlik coming out of Moon pre-33 minutes with 13 catches is an exceptional start to, really good. to his yeah. run. Yeah, normally you're coming out of Moon anywhere between 12 to 15 Pokemon. Uh, so... As, as everybody knows, there is a copy pasta, give or take 30 seconds, yada yada. Uh, but 33 exit, like pre 33 exit, 13 catches, exceptional, honestly. I struggle to get 33 minute exits in my runs all the time. <laughs> so seeing this here is amazing. I'm getting the nice bonus too with Ekans. Mm hmm. The Ekans on top. Picking up that extra bonus Pokemon there. Luggy, not too far behind. Uh, Pikachu, uh, if you are not plus attack or you're not minus special attack, typically the way that you do this fight on Pikachu is that you Thundershock one, expect uh, Pikachu, and then Thundershock the other and attempt to finish off both with uh, Odish's Acid. Looks like Luggy is uh, looking at Pikachu's level. is level 14 going to 15 right now, so not getting that... Yeah not getting that level 15 damage boost uh, to finish this fight off in two turns. A little bit unfortunate, um, but got our way through the fight, didn't get poisoned. That's all that kind of matters here, honestly, to me. Poison is very cringe, and you will be seeing potential for that a lot in the upcoming minutes. Oh boy, yeah. But successfully out of Rock Tunnel, always a good sign. No, not Rock Tunnel, sorry, this is my moon. Oops. Yeah. Uh, You're about like 45 minutes too early for that. <laughs> look, 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 I, I will always repeat this opinion. Rock Tunnel is like my favorite part of this run. I'm just antsy, okay? And I also get confused, my bad. But anyway, so Eevee coverage moves. Why were we saying that Eevee is crack, versatile, dumb, etc., etc.? Um, so. In this game, since your Eevee cannot evolve, as Dynam was saying, this is a remake slash spiritual successor to Pokemon Yellow. And we already know that Pokemon Yellow was a pretty much anime propaganda made into a video game. Uh, <laughs> your starter will not evolve. Uh, so let's go Pikachu is not going to get a Raichu. And let's go Eevee. Well, that Eevee is also not evolving. So to compensate, let's say, um, they did the, this thing with Eevee where they gave Eevee a coverage move for each of its evolutions. At least all the evolutions that existed at the time of this game, uh, ever since they haven't released another evolution, but I don't know, they could always release another one. Uh, it's free money, after all. Um, <laughs> True. And in Cerulean, um, Eevee gets uh, the first set of coverage moves, and they correspond to the first evolutions that were ever introduced, uh, Jolteon, Flareon, and Vaporeon. Um, TLDR, Eevee gets a fire move, a, a cracked fire move, a cracked electric move, and a pretty good water move. And this is one of the big reasons why Eevee can eat up most of the game while Pika needs some partners or, you know, for coverage because Pika did not get as much love. Uh, if, you know, any of you guys want to explain what Pika gets instead of Eevee. Yes. So, Pikachu also has a handful of, like, special fancy moves, but only one of them really means anything for us here, which is Zippy Zap. It is 50 base power, but we have some special things with it because it always crits. And you get stabbed because it's electric, and we're electric, so basically the 50 base power doesn't really mean anything. It's it's a lot better than that. And it also has plus two priority, so we're going to be able to go first most of the time. Hopefully all of the time, and we won't see when we might not go first, but... Yeah, so yeah, we're so making it through the, the Misty fight just fine. Uh, Buzzy Buzz being one of those special EV moves that you had mentioned, uh, gets always gets paralysis off on a target, uh, which is very useful in EV versions fight because Starmie will outspeed Eevee. So you use Buzzy Buzz to paralyze Starmie, paralysis, paralysis cutting Starmie's speed, which means that you'll get to two turn it, um, essentially, and Starmie won't get a second attack off. Uh, 
did see Scald. Did not see Burn, thankfully. Did not see Burn, thankfully, yeah. <laughs> Skull being a very strong water move that has a chance to burn. Uh, Leggy shouldn't have any problem here due to her Pikachu's attack AVs that I had mentioned earlier. Let's see all the stats here as well. I'm putting those later, but thankfully, due to Zippy Zap uh, having priority, being able to always crit, having that 1.5. Uh, times damage boost due to same type attack bonus, uh, along with a plus two stat bonus from the next attack, takes down the star move of these. And let's not mince word here. words here. If Eevee didn't get these coverage moves, oh man, Pikachu would be like so far ahead right now because like <laughs> <laughs> Misty is so free with like Pikachu's base vanilla set. But no, Eevee gets all this a uh, protagonist the privilege, let's call it. <laughs> and uh yeah look at this we're not learning bite like, like come on like we really look at bite which is a pretty solid move right and we just nah we don't need it we, we got a move that always paralyzes we got a move that always burns and i don't i don't know where the water move is relevant but there's no water condition so it it, it heals you mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah that and ends up being very those, useful all of those <laughs> are a hundred percent chance to happen oh like, yeah yeah Sorry, Greta, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, the the bouncy bubble effect of healing you can be useful, especially here, because we don't have to heal. We're just always healing, basically. Uh, uh, anybody else uh, getting a bit sleepy? Uh, <laughs> oh, we're in Nugget Bridge. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, I, I guess during this uh, snooze fest that is Nugget Bridge, one thing that we will note is that Pikachu will... Uh, could possibly have a time due to uh, Sandshrew being a two-turn fight if you decide to go into it alone with Pikachu. Uh, the safe option is to summon a second controller, uh, which you can absolutely do in this in this game. You can just pop in a second controller, not only helps out with catches, also helps out with battles, which we'll see a lot of uh, later on as well. Uh, but Oddish can take out the Sandshrew, no problem. Again, Oddish's Absorb is OP against Sandshrew and Onyx. Uh, so you can take the time to heal up Pikachu on its turn, and then take out the Sandshrew uh, with Absorb on the Oddish's turn. Uh, but one thing that I did want to note uh, as we're going through this Nugget Bridge section is uh, the implications for the basically the future rounds of the tournament. So due to this particular race, oh, my, my spreadsheet is going away somehow. Uh, Due to this being a two-person race and not a three-person race, uh, our competitors Leggy and Zimlik will be vying for that first place finish to move on to round three. First place in a race um, will guarantee you moving on, whereas if you finish in second, you will need to come up with a very solid time in order to take one of the two spots in the lower bracket to, to advance to the next round based off of time. So currently, the, the time to beat for Zimlik, if I can go back over here and refresh my spreadsheet, uh, I believe is Pengi's time currently. Pengi being on the on the lower bubble. Uh, looking at the time right now, is a time of 3.18.17. So whichever runner ends up being in that second place position uh, is also hoping to look to beat Pengi's time to stay within the tournament. Looks like Leggy getting through Sandshrew unscathed. Didn't get yeah. cringed on by Sand Attack, didn't get cringed on by Poison Sting Poison, the two things that Sandshrew absolutely can do to you. Uh, getting through it just fine. We earned a fabulous prize, oh my god. Yay! Oh, chicken rocket. nugget! Oh no! Who oh, could have no. seen this coming for m so many races that we've done this bit on in a row? <laughs> oh my gosh! Simply like doing the base thing of talking to the rocket run while still on the bridge, which actually influences the background for this battle. There you go. Did you know gaming? Yeah, this is true. Yes. Did you know, Chad? <laughs> I will say though that I didn't notice 
probably until like running this game two to three weeks in that the the pedestals on the bridge actually have nuggets on them. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> I love this game so much. It's fantastic. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, we're not going for the good ending. We're not joining Team Rocket. Um, yeah, we'll uh, go and keep cash bonds, uh, filling out that Pokedex, sorta, and uh, go for the league. Zinlik making uh, his way through uh, Route well, 25. Well, see, Leggy, sorry, so Leggy's background is different, because ah, she yes. talked to the record god off the bridge. Oh my god, I love this. <laughs> yes, it was relevant. <laughs> we got version differences, we got girl-boy differences, we got background differences. This is, uh, the sh this is the grand showcase of everything that Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee have to, have to offer us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it. That's all they have. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Pack it up. We can go home, folks. No, please, please stay around. We've got, we've got over two more hours filled with jam-packed action in the in this race. Yeah, this game never stops. I mean, like the bit about Nugget Bridge being the snooze fest was was kind of like not really a bit, but we promise this 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 run has a lot of action in it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Route 25, as you saw Zimlik do, and as you'll see Luggy about to do, um, features our first like trainer skip in the game, uh, so as Luggy waits for this youngster to look away, uh, she's going to maneuver herself in between, ever so carefully, between those two trainers. Uh, trainers in this game have 25 pixel vision, uh, which is not a lot, uh, but you can navigate around them uh, just fine. Both of our runners executing that skip flawlessly. Uh, not picking up any Pokemon around 25, you can see things like Venonat, Psyduck, your version exclusive grass type. Uh, no Squirtle still yet to be seen throughout this entire tournament, but that That's is... so sad. I want to see we it. We will see it sometime during this tournament. Statistically, a Squirtle will spawn. <laughs> so it must come true. Yeah, Dino giving some much, much deserved credit to the runners for moving in between trainers. Not as easy as it looks, especially because they had to do this in a Joy-Con. They had to do this with a Joy-Con, and if that sounds hellish, it is hellish. And yeah, I know that the runners have experience, they've done this plenty of times, but it takes practice. I put it up the game once and tried to dodge like these trainers, I couldn't, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a casual, but yeah. Props to our runners. Yeah. Movement in this game is also something that we should talk about, and we are talking about it. Yeah, moving just like that glowing bell sprout in Zimlik's background. Not going back for it because it's definitely not worth that at this point. Also, Zimlik also has bell sprout. So, waves by to bell sprout as he does not ditch Bill, saves him from his plight <laughs> of being fused with the Nidorino as Leggy is also doing. Uh, seeing a Squirtle on screen that you cannot get in this run, unfortunately. Might get an AOP, might get in Diploma, but exiting Cerulean. Uh, around the 40, mid 46 minute mark. Very, very solid. Luggy yep. not too far behind, also with a catch up on Zimlik as well. Well, Troy didn't notice that. Luggy is a catch up. Yes. Uh, so we can basically say that they're. Let's say Luggy's maybe a, th a hair's breadth behind Zimlik in terms of full progression. Zimlik obviously a little bit ahead in terms of physical story progression, but it's really anybody's race still, especially coming up on the next route, which will be very interesting to see both of our runners navigate in two very different ways. It's just the appeal of this game. It's it's so good for races like dragon Pokemon trying to, you know, calculate what it's worth it, what it's not worth it, when to leave something behind, when to catch, when to, you know, gun for a Pokemon or ignore it. It's so good. I, I love this. <laughs> if my enthusiasm is not clear enough, chat room, I like speedruns of this game. Truly. It is, it does play a lot more like if you're familiar with a randomizer in like other Pokemon games or other games in general. Uh, not really a randomizer in the sense that like there are static things that spawn in static places, obviously, but just the, the amount of decision making that, uh, 
Luggies and like and all of our runners who are participating in this tourney have to have to handle. Um, it's a very fine balancing act between deciding whether to progress forward, as you mentioned, or to stay behind and get that like one extra catch that you might need. Yeah, coming up on route six, uh, we'll route see six. Evie more than likely pick up uh, picking up a couple items in the other ground, a nugget and a lure to use on this route in order to, again, get those increased spawn rates, get those increased levels. Uh, Eevee will be looking to pick up a rare candy here for use on a ride Pokemon later in the form of Ponyta, as well as possibly catching a couple of extra mons. Whereas Luggy is really, really, really hoping to see one particular fire puppy on this oh, route to make, boy. to make the next fights a couple easier. Or, Next couple of fights a little bit easier. English is difficult sometimes. Please understand. <laughs> all the time. Sometimes, all the time. Don't worry about it. Seems like, unfortunately, running into a rat. Uh, but there's a puff. Yes, if you can. Uh, unfortunately, wasn't able to get those oh, Pokeballs no. out in, in time. Oh, no. But Jigglypuff having an attack cycle here means that someone can get off a solid throw. The typical way that you want to end up catching Jigglypuff is just throw immediately. If Jigglypuff gets an off an attack, it means that it'll stay still for the next cycle. But Jigglypuff just likes to uh, to float away like he saw on some like screen there. So taking a little bit of extra time, but does get the Jigglypuff. Uh, did not see whether or not Zimlik got an extra Moonstone, but will more than likely I use it either so. on the Puff or an upcoming Nidoran. Whereas yeah, Leggy, don't think, don't think he got an extra Moonstone. Oh, instant puppy for Leggy. That is exactly, oh, go. exactly what you want to see, especially on Pikachu. Ooh. So I'm looking at glowing pul Pulpix. I know uh, somebody in this uh, commentary <laughs> scene really enjoys Pulpix of the Alolan kind. Me, me, no, no wait, no, not me. I actually <laughs> prefer, I'm the spot of the devil that prefers Kintonian Pulpix, yeah. I love I them care. both. I'll but... die on this hill. But Alolan is fluffy. I True. like fluffy. And you can get Alolan wall hooks in this game, if I recall correctly. Yes. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there yeah. was... <laughs> I want to tell this story quickly. There was a time where this was pre-Sword and Shield, where you could just, like, breed Shiny Hunt, Masuda Method. And so I caught like 50 billion Vulpixes and traded them with the NPC and trying to get a Shiny. It did not... it did not happen, but... It was... it was something. Who? Zimlik taking that trainer skip just fine, and oh, Leggy no. unfortunately hitting the trainer's it was close. Left. I believe this trainer has the bell sprout, so Leggy can probably just take it out in two headbutts. Charmander, okay. So, two headbutts probably. Leggy definitely wants to conserve some zippy zaps for the boat rival fight that's coming up, as well as Route 9, so I'm expecting her to, yep, double headbutt will be more than enough to take out the Charmander. I was holding my breath there because Ember does have yeah. a chance to burn. Uh, thankfully doesn't get it. A uh, little bit of a setback, but she'll be moving on just fine. Uh, at least, at the very least, Route 6 gave her a Growlithe. Um, you'll also notice, as I mentioned before, taking the route a little bit differently than Zimlik. Uh, normally, you can get a rare candy up on Route 6, as Zimlik did, uh, in the little like empty patch. It's, it's just hidden in the, in the ground somewhere. Leggy opting to skip it entirely due to one, there being a faster rare candy a little bit later on. Two, uh, Growlithe is used as a ride Pokemon, in fact, for Pikachu, um, which is basically as fast as Rapidash for all intents and purposes. Uh, so skipping that rare candy there saves her uh, a good chunk of time that she'll be able to, to put elsewhere in the run. We're not going to talk about the tangential frame loss that you get from Arcanine. It's one <laughs> pixel per frame difference. Unless you're running the 80% <laughs> category, uh, which does allow you to use mounts such as Rapidash and Aerodactyl to skip trainers. Uh, yeah, don't even worry about it. One pixel per frame. Sure, we want to go fast, but don't have to go that fast. Turns out we are counting pixels after all. 
Hell yeah. <laughs> the beauty of this game. You count pixels, you count Pokemon, you know. I actually just choked on my drink. Give me a minute. Oh no. Oh. Do not recommend. Alright. I'm all composed now as our runners enter the SSN portion of the run. Uh, we're where they will be both fighting a uh, boat rival very soon. I believe we're Eevee... on a boat. Yes, we're you on are boat. on a boat. Uh, does Eevee tend to, to see this fight, or can it effectively one controller it? Do you, either of you know? Well, similar collecting to two controller it. I want to say it's doable, but dumb risky. Probably one one controllable if you have like really good uh, good experience on easy. Don't you need an X attack like a hundred percent of the time though? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I'm looking up the I'm looking up the notes right now. It's looking like uh, you should open with Buzzy Buzz as well as an X spec or a X special attack on the Pidgeotto, and then at least get the attack stats to plus 2 as well, so that you can headbutt the Pikachu and suicide the Oddish for Eevee. Um, whereas for Pikachu, uh, that Growlithe that Leggy caught is uh, it's coming into play right about now. Um, Growlithe has two really good moves in the form of one Helping Hand, which will boost the your partner Pokémon's attack uh, by a specific multiplier that I cannot remember off the top of my head right now. Um, Growlithe also has Flamethrower at level 17, which is insane. Wait, deadass? Deadass? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Growlithe gets a 90 base power <laughs> fire move at level 17 in this game. Yeah, uh, so which... something important to note there really quickly is that is the problem. If you get Growlithe without the lure up, there, yeah, I don't think you're going to be getting that move because that extra level is important. I'm actually gonna look this up to see what level Bell learns flamethrower. I'm still, in this game. I'm still reeling back from this new information. That is one <laughs> thing I just learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah you are absolutely correct. Yeah, Growlithe learns flamethrower at level 17. So if that Growlithe was not lured, uh, Luggy would be out of luck. Really, <laughs> that's all I can really say. That with flamethrower oh. and headbutt, Oddish goes down. Boat rival finish for both of our runners. Uh, noting also that our catches are synced up. Uh, so Leggy only one cutscene really behind behind Simlick at this point. Such a close race. I've been pretty much toe to toe all the way, all the way. But yeah, I think I believe this is the first instance of a an HM in this game? Not really an HM, you guys can yeah, HM's explain the finer details. We haven't used HM since, like, what was the last generation that used HM? Six? Six. I think, yeah, because seven had rides, Six, yeah. eight, uh, you have a bike and a, a flying taxi, nine, you have a legendary, so, yeah. Secret techniques. They are Secret a thing. Secret techniques, yep. So, pretty much, there's no HMs in this game, and like the game advertises, everything is done by the mascot Pokemon. And yeah, pretty much, TLDR, Eevee will be helping us, Eevee or Pikachu, sorry, will be helping us chopping down those trees, um, surfing, and eventually flying around. Um, don't question it, just welcome it. <laughs> yeah. Zimlik making the second trainer pass, alright, so Zimlik is 3 for 3 for trainer passes. This run, which is solid. Luggy going to probably hug the left side just a little bit because uh, had to take out the Charmander Trainer. Uh, but the good thing about that is that you don't have to worry about hitting the trainers on the way up. Does see an Abra. Interesting to see oh. how she'll approach this. Going to opt this to the second turn. Okay, Ab perfect. Perfect. Okay, we avoided an easy? Abra moment. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, if you. If you look at Avra and it looks at you, uh, it's gonna, it's, it's gone. It's out of there. It's not gonna get there for long. Yeah, yeah. But here we actually see the use of a pine of berry. Um, uh, no, no, that actually, I'm sorry, that one. Um, yeah, it dates the Pokemon and makes it stop moving because Avra just literally does not sit still. 
and yeah, it makes the catch a little easier. And Abra is pretty much always worth it, I think. You guys can correct me on that. Oh, absolutely. You see an Abra, yes. you take it. Yeah. Uh, didn't know what level that Abra was. I know that things on this route can spawn between, I believe, level 13 and 16 if they are unlured. Uh, but Abra being very close to its evolution level of 16, which it, it will evolve into Gabra at, uh, Luggy probably just going to hang on to the Abra to evolve it either way. Uh, one thing that I thought that Luggy was going to do, and uh, you can actually do with Abra, uh, summoning the second controller and running into the po into a Pokemon in the overall will basically cause it to hop and in place and stun it for about one and a half to two seconds at which time Abra will not teleport away and you can basically run up to it without fear of it uh, mm -hmm. teleporting away. Uh, but got the angle, approached the Abra from just a little bit behind to its side, walking away with two extra caches in her pocket effectively. Level 13, as chat is pointing out, so she'll probably be hanging on to it as she does her uh, catches on Route 10 just to push that extra catch just a little bit. Moving on, uh, viewers might have noticed that we skipped Lieutenant Surge's uh, gym. That's going to be a trend. <laughs> be back in like an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See well, ya. more than that. See you, old man. We don't need you. So, we... I... What am I trying to say here? Um, one thing you can do in this game is... Yeah, you can straight up skip gym, the gyms. Sorry. Uh, you know, that's that skeleton meme that says, you know, you can always book it or something like that. I, I don't remember it at the time. But I'm sure the chat can piece that together. How Probably about a Xenoblade reference? I'll say running is a valid tactic. <laughs> <laughs> running is a valid... All right, yeah, yes. moving on. Uh, you can skip gyms <laughs> because there's pretty much no obligation for us to skip to skip gyms. I know that Fire Red and Leaf Green Runners would love to um, leave Search very behind. But alas, they cannot because... They must for HM purposes. Um, plenty of you would know that um, the use of HM moves outside of battle, battle is locked between, it, behind sorry, certain gym badges. That's not a thing in this game. Uh, Eevee learns to cut, and or Pikachu learns to cut, they can use it. Uh, they learn to surf, they can use it. No requirement for the badges. And we'll be marathoning all of these gyms pretty soon, in about an hour, like, uh, like Greta mentioned. Yeah, that is one great thing about this game is that not locking the secret techniques behind HMs or blah, 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 behind gym badges rather uh, really opens up the world entirely to kind of go about how you'd like and really blasts like has done wonders in routing this game I would imagine. <laughs> But both Lucky and Zilnik making it through Route 9 fights just fine. Zilnik already starting on his first catch of Route 10, a very small rat. Uh, was but a glowing. very high level rat, which is why we didn't catch it before chat room. Exactly. Uh, you obviously can catch uh, like a Rattata on Route 2 if you wanted the extra experience, but this Rattata will evolve in one level to Raticate seeing as its evolution is level 20, uh, will evolve uh, straight away. Um, does mean that Zimlik locks himself out of catching Raticate, um, which is a good source of XP, but elects to uh, just go for the guaranteed uh, evolution instead, which is completely respectable. Is that Krabby glowing? Yes, it is. Yes, it is huge having King Crab tonight, as long as he gets in the ball. <laughs> don't, don't say that. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't think I've actually ever had King Crab. Uh, Let's Leggy, see, Leggy. Her chances with Route 10 to see Small Rat, which I believe she already has, just going to elect to go to for the Nidoran female. Uh, as I mentioned before, Pikachu does need w at least one of the two Nidoran lines in order to uh, progress through the game just fine. Uh, Nidoran female being a little less desirable than its male counterpart, uh, but does have uh, some inherent advantages in, in hideout due to its crunch ability or crunch move as well. 
So we'll see if anything else decides to pop up for Luggy, as Zumbuk's Rattata instantly goes to eradicate from that glowing Krabby spawn. Yeah, this like there's like this hot spot of Pokemon that we the runners spend a lot of time in before we go to Rug Tunnel. This place is stacked. Has a lot of returning Pokemon that are in high levels, such as the Rat, and a lot of new catches such as Krabby and the Nidos. Yeah, definitely stacked in terms of what can spawn. However, this particular grass patch is locked to only four spawns. Uh, yeah. So if you see four Firos, that means that you'll either have to move on or do what Luggy did and use a Repel trick, which you can do. Um, if you use a Repel in your back, instantly despawns all of the Pokemon, as that's what Repels do in this game. And then you can then relore to ensure that all of the Pokemon are at the correct level that you need and gets them to spawn in hopefully a better pattern than you would have thought before. Pikachu learning Thunderbolt. We like to keep that along Sippy Sap due to the physical special split. And PP purposes, I would say, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely a little bit of both, I would say. Uh, oh, good, 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 good. Nidoran Mail on Luggy's screen. Uh, oh, hell yeah. So this is the one that she will definitely be evolving into uh, Nidorino, followed by Nido King to help her out in a <gasps> tower and hideout. It's a tiny, dude, this is going to be like a four foot three short king Nido King. Oh, let's go. <laughs> let's go. I don't even think Nidorans are four feet to start out with. No, no, oh, no, no, it's no. it's so small. It's it's yeah, just no, no, four. Wait. It's four inches tall. Well, oh when, when it reaches, oh when it reaches Nido King, like I, I don't know if you do, but like the max uh, uh, height that Nido King can have is like barely below five feet. It's stupid. It's a it's a man lit, but uh, yeah, we love short kings. We support them. They will carry us. Kings. I don't. And from Simplex's side, I haven't seen a Mel Nido, or I've not been paying attention. Well, it's a good thing that there's a tracker that we have. Uh available for our casters. Uh, does, yeah, True. does not look yeah. like he currently has a Nidoran male in party. So hopefully gonna grab one of those on his way out, but we'll just have to see how the rest of Route 10 treats him. Yeah, speaking of the tracker, um, if I can explain it shortly, basically, well, I guess if you are tracked in this game, you can track all the Pokemon that you're catching in your head. Uh, but like we mentioned, there are a lot of on-the-fly decisions, and some people, uh, my co-commenters might know who the developers were. I do not know that, and I'm embarrassed for not knowing that. Um, but yeah, the runners use the tracker to not only track what's already been caught, but also plan ahead of what they want to catch. That's why you'll see two different shades of the color that they use for, tra for tracking Pokemon. And the beauty of this, uh, having Pika and Eevee, next to each other is that you can already see some pretty significant differences. On the Pika side, uh, we got Beetle you know, King plants, so like the entire line. We went on the uh, Eevee side of things. None, neither Nita Queen nor Nita King are planned, but Wigglytuff is, which Pika is not having. Yeah, to speak a little bit to the origins of the tracture, and please, uh, if anybody uh, has more clarification on this, on this, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, oh, I got you. Okay, good. Glowing Fira running away. Good choice. Glowing Fira. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I believe the originator of the tracker uh, goes by Bob Chow87 on Twitch. Correct. And uh, they had the original idea, and I think that Etiquette, uh, another, uh, as everybody knows Etiquette around here, uh, <laughs> expanded on that, created a a standalone application for it uh, yes. based off of that idea. And currently, the one that you see on screen, which is rotating between both of our runner's trackers, uh, is made by Spider-C, um, which has been exceptionally helpful in mm -hmm. keeping tabs on everything that has been going on the journey. So major props to all of our all of our devs and aspiring devs if you want to even compound upon these things for, for future Let's Go activities. I'm sure they would all be more than welcome to, to work with you on that or give you some ideas either way, but glad to have it available for, for the tournament for sure. The runners pretty much almost synced up after that catching session. Incredible. Yeah, both of them doing the 
tag team with Lorelei. Lorelei beats up three rocker and you take out the other one. Uh, Pika can also elect to. You saw Leggy to controller it with uh, Bloom. Uh, didn't exactly see how it went, but I presume that it, it goes somewhere along the lines of Thunderbolt Radicate and then X Special Attack with Gloom. Uh, you, there is also a, an option to one control th that fight with Pikachu if you are level 23 with a couple of attack 80s. Uh, you can headbutt the Raticate, try to force a flinch so you don't take any damage, and then uh, double kick can finish it off. Uh, but as Leggy and Zimlick are entering Rock Tunnel, mm -hmm. Leggy having the most Whoa. desired catch on screen currently. This is absolutely what you want to see. Uh, Rhyhorn, the first ride Pokemon of the run. Yeah, Rock Tunnel is unapo unapologetically my favorite part of this game. So many runs, like level up to like, Super Saiyan 4, God Super Saiyan <laughs> Instinct, yeah, or they immediately die. Um, uh, like, Rock Tunnel is so volatile, it's, uh, yeah, keeps you at the edge of the seat, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, a lot of Pokemon, a lot of difficult Pokemon, a lot of rare Pokemon that are desirable. Cuff, cuff, rare. <laughs> Chat room. Um, but yeah, lots of fun. Yeah, Rock Tunnel, like, I still struggle so much with all of the decision making that you must do in Rock Tunnel. There is a very fine balancing act between getting rid of all of the evolutions and such that you had on Route 10, trying to figure out, like, all right, in what order are the things going to spawn in Rock Tunnel, and what is the optimal order to get them in, in order to party manage well. Uh, Pikachu also needs to evolve either Nidoking or Nidoqueen, Leggy depositing Nidorina, so opting to go for the Nidoking line there, um, as well as doing some, maybe some bag management as well. So between navigating Rock Tunnel, doing all of your catches properly and also doing inventory and party management properly it is it is a very very delicate dance uh and it will be very interesting to see how these two runners play out the rest of rock tunnel zimlik opting to go straight for the, the slowpoke trainer that is first after catching the zubat Wait, did we see rare char? Why is chat spamming rare char? Neither <laughs> of us see fun. No, I guess I did a bit. <laughs> I said there might be some rare Pokemon. <laughs> uh, totally whooshed over my head. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like uh, like Dinah was saying, it's just that Rock Tunnel is like the the peak of the expression for this game. Oh, Rhyhorn on Simplex side. Okay, um, fantastic. It's like there's so much management, so much, so many things going on at once, so many decisions to take on top of movement, on top of being fast. I, I love it. As a spectator, I love it. I know that runners don't love it, but I'm not a runner. <laughs> I, I would say, I would argue that both of our runners are loving Rock Tunnel at this point in time, just due to the fact that both of them got early Rhyhorn, Luggy having it the first encounter that she had, Zimlik getting it uh, as the first encounter in the second room. So, very, very good to see early Rhyhorns. Eevee desperately needs Rhyhorn much, much more than Pikachu does, due to Pika having the option of evolving Growlithe into Arcanine not long after Rock Tunnel. If you don't get Rhyhorn and Eevee, you're just kind of out of luck, honestly, until you get yeah. over to Route 17 for a Ponyta. And even then, you need a good Ponyta with a high level that agrees with you. <laughs> Essentially. Keep on. Little Cubone in, in Rock Tunnel. I believe this is a 10% spawn, if I recall correctly. 10 or 9. Yeah. I think it's 9. Yeah, Kanga, Kangaskhan are every AOP and Diploma Runner's favorite Pokemon, uh, <laughs> taking up that Can't coveted 1% spawn slot. Simlick hopping on that right horn. Leggy halfway through the shortest of short kinks. Simlick petting the right horn for, for good RNG in this fight. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate. Uh, it looks like for Eevee, um, typically what you want to do is X attack Sizzly Slide um, twice. Uh, Sizzly Slide being one of those. Uh, 
EV exclusive moves will always burn the target. Burn being a status ailment that halves the opposing Pokemon's attack. Um, and Kangaskhan having a decent attack. Uh, getting Comet Punch, which is a multi-hit move. Uh, very slow, but thankfully only hits three times out of the possible five. Eevee's going to take this out just fine. Whereas Pika, uh, depending on what level your Pikachu is at, and if you've been tracking your stats, Pikachu being level 24 means that you can either do X Special Double Thunderbolts, or you could also do X Attack into Headbutt Double Kick, both which will guarantee uh, the kill onto Kangaskhan. Oh, I don't think we've mentioned uh, the secondary portion of status in this game. Uh, status elements being a thing, Paralyze, Poison, Burn, Sleep, Freeze, etc. Uh, those moves can also have animations, even though, as Greta had mentioned, we turn animations off at the beginning of the game. For whatever reason, oh, speaking of Kanga, goodness, on uh -huh. Leggy's screen, hey. eats, hey. eats up the Kanga, sees Kanga off to the right. Farewell, <laughs> Kanga. Not a great catch. Yep. Don't don't do it at any percent NMS unless you absolutely need to. Uh, but uh, status animations do lag uh, a little bit, anywhere between like one to five seconds, depending if you're lucky or unlucky. So typically want to keep Pokemon status as minimally as possible. Um, but Leggy grabbing a Graveler, glowing at that, is going to provide a good amount of XP for her Pikachu, Nido, Nido as well as the rest of the evolutions that she still needs in her party. Uh, Zubat about to evolve as well. And speaking of evolutions, uh, Zimlet getting that Nidorino evolution, getting that Zubat evolution, Still very close race. Our runners are still oh. essentially like we both saw them beat up the Kanga trainer, so they're at the same point in the story, plot progression wise. Same amount of catches. This is still one hour and 15 minutes into this race. Absolutely neck and neck. Yep, pretty much synced up. We almost had two gold bats on the screen. Oh no, we have two gold bats on the screen at the same time. <laughs> Let's nice. go. Let's go. Spam your Golbs or whatever emote has Golbat in chat. I, I don't know what emotes have Golbat in their names. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if there isn't one out there, we should make one. I know that, I think it was May who made yeah, Golb. Golb. Yeah, I was thinking uh, of it's, that. It's somewhere. I don't know where it is. It, it's somewhere out in the... <laughs> oh wow, Zimlake making me eat my words. From yesterday, uh, he said that on his tracker, he wasn't planning on Nidoking, King, but here we have a Nidoking. King. See, chat? So dynamic. So many decisions on the plot. I love the speedrun. <laughs> hey, look, two Nidokings on screen at the same time. Oh, hell oh, yeah! <laughs> this is actually so hype. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually, really I need, I, okay, okay, I need this Nidoking King hype. Like, I actually need it. Uh... Well, as as the the four seven, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing it over on this on screen here. Uh, so interestingly enough, uh, we'll see if Zimluck decides to uh, use the Nido King in in the fights coming up in the mid game, uh, a la Pikachu strats. Oh wait, oh dang! I need to refresh my feed. <laughs> All right, all caught up. Uh, Leggy electing to evolve Nidoqueen. Um, yeah. Probably had already... Oh, yeah, with the second Moonstone. Yeah. Didn't see a Jigglypuff, I don't believe, on Route 6, so no. Nidoqueen being the, the next best option. The reason why you would want to evolve Jigglypuff over Nidoqueen is because, as you saw, Nidoqueen wants to learn Body Slam on Evolution, uh, Wigglytuff, just doesn't want to learn any moves on evolution, which is great for a speedrunning setting, because that'll save us a couple seconds there. Oh yeah, we never explicitly that mentioned dark. that. Um, that was a really good move. Oh, oh. Onyx! <laughs> uh, we never explicitly <laughs> mentioned this, but EXP is shared with all your party in this game. So you might have already noticed that all the Pokemon level up uh, after a catch or I think I forget. I don't think battle exp is shared. Don't quote me on that. Um, but the good, the good side, the, the yeah, the good news is that 
yay, EXP for all the party, faster evolutions and such. The bad side is that we have to sit through all of our Pokémon slowly leveling up, evolving, and also learning new moves. Lot and lot of uh, B button mashing in this game. <laughs> right. Approximately two seconds for every level up that a Pokemon gets. Uh, a little bit more if uh, you learn a, a move on level up. So things such as, uh, say, Rat, like Route 10, Rattata, leveling up into Raticate, pretty quick. Only needs one level, doesn't learn any moves. Uh, something like Zubat is kind of the next step up. Evolves in one level, but learns a move in Leech Life on level up as well as uh oh my gosh like he trying to navigate this wall <laughs> of rocks <laughs> jesus might honestly have to just oh no, right. no 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 moving no, no. all the way through Shh. the onyx oh, oh so close uh, so dang close uh i totally moving. forgot what i was saying oh uh zubat learning a move on level up and evolution as well so that's a couple extra seconds there uh something like cubone which takes four levels to level up learns a move at level 26 uh, in Boomerang, as well as Sword Stance when evolving to Marowak. Uh, so there is something to be said about being able to get uh, get Pokemon to evolve, but also like also considering the overhead in which uh, like it takes to get that extra evolution, for sure. Also, the reason why once a Pokemon reaches like the desired evolution stage, you want to. If you're not gonna use it like actively during the speed run for fights, you immediately want to box them. There's no reason to keep them in the party. Have them keep accruing EXP and also learning moves. Uh, shout out to, I believe it's level 13 Butterfree, which learns three moves all at once. Very yep. fun. Yeah, good old triple powder move for for Butterfree. Yep. That's why you always want to box it. Uh, to avoid having to mash through that those text boxes. You definitely also want to line up your deposits with basically other things that you want to do in your menu too. For example, true, uh, true. like if you catch Rhyhorn, um, you definitely need to mark it as your ride Pokemon. But if you access it through the party menu, maybe you want to dip into that box and dump a couple of evolutions that you may have gotten on Route 10, like a Fira or Eradicate or Nidorina, for example. Or maybe you need to take a Pokemon out, like uh, Growlithe, to go to Pokemon Tower. Maybe you dump a couple of Pokemon there as well as you maybe switch your Super Potions to the first slot. Who knows? So being able to condense all of those actions into a single menu is also really key, because I believe it takes about 8 seconds to get into your Pokemon box, plus 1 for every Pokemon that you need to deposit. Ew. So... Being able to combine menus like that really saves time over the course of a run. Being able to know what you need to do, when you need to do it, and also having the opportunity in which to do it with, uh, all really adds up. Like you had a rug tunnel, 120, 32 mons, Rhyhorn, this is pretty good. And Zimlik, not too far behind. In fact, still very much like on, on pace with each other, probably maximum of 10 seconds separates the two effectively as they both enter Pokemon Tower to uh, to fight their their rivals there so still exceptionally close race and now tower rival yes tower rival you'll see two different methodologies of well, you'll still see both both players to controlling this fight. Pikachu is going to to control this with Nidoking. Uh, we'll expect Luggy to Thunderbolt the Pidgeotto straight away as Nidoking sets up two X attacks in order to poison jab the Gloom and the Jolteon that come up. Uh, I believe Eevee does this with Rhyhorn, if mm -hmm. I recall correctly. Um, Buzzy Buzz and X Special Attack should take out the Pidgeotto just fine, and then depending on who comes out next, you'll either Sizzly slide the Gloom, perhaps, or uh, Drill Run and possibly also Bouncy Bubble, the, the Raichu that comes after. Yeah, you definitely want to get rid of Pidgeotto as soon as possible, as to not deal with Sand Attack fun times. Yeah, 
Nobody likes pocket sand. <laughs> Nobody. Shoutouts to, to New Amber who got absolutely bodied by Rival 5 during one of our <laughs> practice races. Good times. Uh, didn't catch Nido King's attack stat there. I'm going to have to go back and double check. Uh, but Nido King hitting level 27 there. Uh, there are certain attack thresholds that you want to see uh, going into hideout for Nido King. And depending on those attack thresholds, you have a couple of options in which to uh, to deal with hideout. It looks like Zimlik teaching EB double edge. Getting to level 28 before hideout means that uh, he'll be looking to double edge down a couple of crucial fights coming up very shortly. Double edge being a, I believe, 120 base power move that EB gets multiplied by 1.5 brings that to a 180 base power move uh, that deals uh, deals recoil damage. So Zim looked very solid on XP. Leggy also pretty pretty locked in as well, I believe. It looks like Pikachu was level 27 coming out of the rival fight. Oh yeah, it's also very important that you trigger this cutscene before leaving. Otherwise, uh, it's gonna be a little awkward when you get to the game corner and nothing's happening and <laughs> no one's there. <laughs> yeah, this this did happen. I don't recall who did. I won't call them out, uh, but it did happen, unfortunately, in one of the races. But they did manage to to figure out the mistake and head right on back in order to put us the story. Uh, <laughs> I did catch Nido King's stats there. I did see a uh, 69 attack on Nido King at level 27. Very nice. nice. Um, exactly. <laughs> uh, you do you do want to see either 28 attack on Nido King at level 27 or 62 attack on Nido King at level 28. This will let you uh, basically take out. There's a Rocket Grunt that has a Rattata and Voltorb, and it basically allows you to skip an entire X attack. So if you so choose to. Um, saving those crucial extra seconds uh, to go into the menu. Uh, but now we have content on the screen. Oh boy! Uh, less Metronome. content from uh, Metronome hours. <laughs> less content from Lucky's side because Clefairy retaining its fairy typing from Gen. Yeah, set. immediately deleting that. Yeah, get Del that out of here. Go gets deleted by Poison Jab. Double Kick should do the same to Clefairy as well at Ooh, level 28, especially nice. with plus attack. Remember, this EV is very, very naughty and uh, takes things out at the slightest, uh, at the slightest. I was, I was going, I was going somewhere <laughs> with that. <laughs> but yeah, we, um, we dodged the content, uh, for good and bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that Clefairy, for those that don't know, has Metronome. It can lead to some very, very funny situations. Funny, depending on perspective, right? As Fun, spectator, yeah, funny, hilarious. Funny As for spectator, spectators. Yeah. And if you get a, if you get horn drilled and you're not at the equivalent level or higher than the Clefairy, bad things can happen. Uh, I've had a recent run that uh, saw Metronome Fire Punch on my Pikachu, which burned it. And I, oh, was, I remember from your collage. Anything can happen. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Anything goes with Metronome. Any Generation One move, Clefairy can just pull out of its out of its hat. Man, yeah, Leggy, she did grab the Firestone, right? I did, I'm not making that up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that fire, Firestone, which will be destined to the puppy. Speaking yep. of destiny, oh, is that, oh. does that count as a segue? <laughs> I think yeah, that does. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, what what do we foresee in our future for natures of Pokemon? Would you say we see a Porygon? Oh I got a wait. I got a, I got a modest, wait. There was uh, a Porygon on Legacy. Yes. Game? Oh my yeah, god! Curse oh my god. god. <laughs> Porygon being either the the one percent or the secret spawn on Route Eight. Uh, both runners will be getting a Porygon. Don't you worry. We'll be seeing more of that. But uh take that for what you will whatever omen you believe that <laughs> porygon to be goodness 
But anyway, uh, yeah, seeing things the into bit. the future. Yeah, drop it a bit. And so this thing about seeing things into the future, uh, that psychic, which they both talk to in the Pokemon Center, um, is has this in interaction where she'll basically like manipulate all the Pokemon that are going to be spawning uh, to now have a nature of your choice. And the runners have selected Modest. For reasons we will see in a little bit. Yeah, modest being a nature that increases special attack, decreases attack. Uh, just in case you wanted to sync to something else other than modest, the the first selection that you do corresponds to the positive nature. Uh, so the middle selection being special attack, and then the second selection that you do uh, will correspond to the the negative nature that you want, which uh, the first selection being corresponding to attack. So in case you want to sing something like, I don't know, quiet, you also have that option. If you pick uh, <laughs> the fifth option followed by the first, or the third option followed by the fifth option. Yeah, man, but Starmie needs uh, that sand headbutt. I, I, I don't want to lose my attack. Oh, I spoiled it, sorry. <laughs> yes, we will be transitioning main Pokemon soon. It will be Starmie. Uh, yeah, yeah, star switch bit, haha, uh, waterfall, <laughs> bossy posse. <laughs> but that will be coming up after uh, Pikachu and Eevee serve their purpose in the hideout yeah. and tower to finish out their portions of the run. I think you guys can cover for me here. Um, I believe the. I don't. I, I never remember if the psychic, like influences all Pokemon until the clocks uh, rolls over midnight again. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Another reason why setting a clock is very important yep. uh, for this run. Uh, you see two versions of this Hypno fight. Um, also amazing that they're both on the same fight. This is yeah. absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I love it. This race is neck and neck. This uh, race is incredible. Zimlik going for a double edge on Eevee followed up with an X attack from Rhyhorn. Uh, Due to Eevee hitting level 28 before this fight, uh, can easily knock out the Hypno with a plus two double edge. Uh, Leggy opting to poison jab Zippy Zap on the first turn, uh, not having the ranges to basically KO it in one turn, followed up by another attack with a with a healing item on the second turn. Simply being slightly ahead there in movement, but having to pause to heal their Eevee and now there, Eevee, sorry, and now Leggy, a little bit ahead. I love this. Neck and neck. It's looking like Zimlik's still going to open with Eevee on this. I think Double Edge can take out both the Rattata and Voltorb just fine, especially at plus attack. Leggy going for the Poison Jab on Rattata, followed by one to two Poison Jabs on the Voltorb in order to take it out due to Nido King's very high attack at this portion. Uh, as I mentioned before, 69 attack, very nice. Uh, we'll take this Volta route in two hits. Uh, Dynam, since your eyes work better than mine and you're definitely more knowledgeable, uh, any estimate on uh, Nido King's like nature uh, for the rest of its stats? Uh, I wouldn't know, unfortunately. Uh, I don't really pay attention to Nido King's nature at all. Uh, I will say that if I see like 50 anywhere like below 58 attack i usually assume that it's minus attack nature but other than that i don't really look at nido king's other stats nido king can have enough speed to outspeed both the radicate at the start of hideout as well as speed tie the voltorb on this fight um but outside of that it's like it's very niche you don't really adjust your strategy based off of that Here we have the support trainer coming up for both of our runners. Yep. Both runners using Rhyhorn to attack the Grimer. Uh, Draw Run will knock it out very cleanly in one hit, uh, assuming Rhyhorn is level 25 or above. Uh, level 24 Rhyhorn usually needs an extra turn uh, to, to hit that range. That Grimer can be a little bit trolly. It can harden, uh, which will ensure that it doesn't get knocked down one turn unless Drill Run crits. Drill Run being the ground equivalent of Slash, uh, high critical hit ratio move. 
uh, can get through that. Uh, if you don't KO that Grimer in one turn, it's very advisable to switch over to Stomp on Rhyhorn instead of Draw Run, assuming that you've already damaged the Grimer, uh, preventing both Grimer disabling your Draw Run, uh, which causes it to be unusable for that turn, or Grimer using Minimize, because Stomp bypasses accuracy checks on a minimized target and also deals double damage. Funny interaction. So many. I don't know why Pokemon has so many niche interactions. <laughs> but yeah, that is some, one of them. There's some real interesting like interactions, like <laughs> with with moves in these games for sure. Got some Pokemon platforming over here. Oh hell yeah. We're now shout playing as the Mon. Shoutouts to Mario fans eating well from the Nintendo Directs earlier. Uh, doing some platforming, Pokemon style. Grabbing the lift key, normally in the uh, Gen 1 games, the rocket would just be like, Oh no, I dropped, I dropped the, the lift, lift key. key. <laughs> uh, but in this, this game, a little bit smarter than that, decides to chuck the lift key up on top of some gratings. Uh, but our partner Pokemon being able to to navigate some air vents, some some girders and gratings up top. And we'll grab that lift key just fine. And both our runners heading into the next rotating pad section on their way to their second Justin James fight. Much, much, much more dangerous than the first one. Yep, they're not messing around this time. Yeah, not only are they not messing around, uh, we're really underleveled <laughs> at oh, this yeah. point in the game. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> Pikachu, Eevee, roughly around anywhere between 27 to level 29 here. Uh, this Weezy and Arbok, I believe, comes in at about 32 or 33. Um, and if they double up into a single Pokemon, that can spell absolute disaster. But we'll still see, again, two different versions of the fight between Pikachu and Eevee here. Eevee's going to open up likely with Eevee and Rhyhorn, while Pikachu on Leggy's side opens up with Rhyhorn and Nidoking. Uh, both going to attempt to, I believe, KO the Arbok first, due to it having uh, a Paralysis and Glare and a very yeah. strong uh, physical attack in Poison Jab. So we'll see Glitzy Girl come out from Eevee to set up a light screen. It's secondary Ooh, effect. Eevee got poisoned. Ooh, Eevee getting poisoned is not the greatest. Still still salvageable. While on Leggy's side, we see Rhyhorn growing to level 26 as it cleanly knocks out the Arbok in one shot. Very good to see on that side. Potential for a two-turn Justin James on Leggy's side. No, Leggy, no! Don't do don't don't do drill run on the Weezing! It has levitate! Abilities. <laughs> ah, Imagine having. Ah, oh no! Yeah. It levitated oh, no. and avoided the attack. It went to the ground. No, no way, dude. <laughs> commentator's curse. Oh, Dro yeah, Draw sorry. run is Shut a ninety-five percent <laughs> accurate move. Uh, unfortunately, one in twenty chance to miss entirely, but recovers it totally fine. Draw run, helping hand, finishes off the wheezing on turn three. Uh, yeah, as... I owe. I owe the community a twit longer for that one. I'm so sorry, <laughs> lady. <laughs> <laughs> the five percent chance for wheezing to levitate, unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> Decided to you know hop off the ground at the correct moment. Oh, but they're uh, again exceptionally close race, literally within a second. Of each other. Literally, oh yeah. my gosh! As they enter this next fight, um, this second of three boss fights in this gauntlet against Archer One. Uh, this fight is evil. <laughs> yes, it definitely can be. Uh, opens up with a wheezing. They are frame for frame right now. Just, just saying. This is amazing. <laughs> oh my god, this is frame for frame. Oh, Chad, clip it, clip it, clip it and ship it. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, again, both going to two C with their respective starters. Uh, Pikachu is going to Thunderbolt this wheezing twice, as Nido King opts to. Uh, uh, use an X special attack. Same thing on ED side. Glitzy Glow as wow. well as Thunderbolt. Uh, does not look like any poison shenanigans. No burn shenanigans. Just going to finish it off on the second turn as uh, they heal and set up 
uh, again, respectively. As both Weezins go down. Uh, I believe, yes, Lucky Star Screams, uh, Pikachu's nature is neutral. Um, if you are minus speed, this Golbat can outspeed you, which can be a little bit dicey if you're not already at full HP. But able to exit the Archer 2 or Archer 1 fight very cleanly. Both Pokemon at high HP doesn't need to heal. Um, Zimlik doesn't need to use Rhyhorn anymore. That's going to stay in the back pocket. Doesn't need to heal. Going to go into the Geo 1 fight with Eevee alone. Last boss of this gauntlet. Geo doing the obligatory RPG villain spelling out their entire plan in front of a child. Exactly. What's uh, what's an anime moment without like the evil villain spending their entire like five minute spiel as they like wind up their ultimate attack? Uh, their <laughs> ultimate attack being Persian. Yep. Um, Persian is very very scary for Eevee. I feel like um, very it fast. Can be precarious. Oh, that slash is scary. No fake out. Looks like uh, Eevee is going to opt to Sizzly Slide, probably going to heal on this turn. Uh, Slash does do a lot of damage, even though uh, the burn mitigates half the attack. On Leggy's side, uh, Persian going down to setting up to plus six attack on Pikachu, that is three whole X attacks with a Zippy Sap. Um, Pikachu obviously only has one move really to deal with Rhyhorn, Double Kick, and that is only guaranteed with a Double Kick plus six Helping Hand. Uh, Eevee getting through just fine with the Persian, no longer afraid about the rest of this fight, as all of its HP that's been depleted gets healed right back up with that signature move Bouncy Bubble on this right horn, mm -hmm. being four times weak to water. Eevee is dumb. But yeah, I do want to say that that, that like, Shadows to Sim, like, uh, that Persian was really scary. The Slash having, you know, like a high and critical ch chance. Um, and they were already, I, yeah, they were only in trade range. Uh, Eevee was on the red after the Persian. Uh, really scary. Um, but yeah, we, we should move. Yeah, we're moving. Making it out just fine. Noting that Zimlik does have now one, two Pokemon over Leggy, which is give or take, air quotes, a one minute advantage in that regard. Uh, but Leggy making it out of the cutscene just fine. Also, hello Raiders from the other channel. Welcome into hello. what is an exceptionally close race between two very solid runners in Leggy and Zimlik. Um, this race, uh, if you have not been here from the start, has been this close from the get-go, continuously throughout the entire race. I would say that they are like, give or take now 10 to 15 seconds. like separate these two runners overall. Um, Leggy going for the stack of Ultra Balls in Hideout. Uh, this is a stack of five to complement the ones that you get from Sophia. Looks like Zimlik is also going to get those for safety. So these runners will both have a total of 10 Ultra Balls uh, at minimum to get them through the remainder of their catch route. Leggy having 31 catches as opposed to Zimlik's 33. Leggy looking for that Growlithe. Um, as we had alluded to before, this Growlithe is going to come into play uh, very soon. We're going to mark it as the Ride Pokemon. Uh, it's going to follow us for a little bit. It's going to meet a very untimely end <laughs> very soon. Uh, but it's for it's for the sake of the speed run. As it's a good cause. As Just look away, Chad. Just look away. <laughs> flashbacks to Foy Coco from uh, Victory Road Scarlet Violet. <laughs> Just, you all know what's what's coming, but... But yeah, I also want to mention that post-hideout, uh, both runners picking up the, I believe, second secret technique, Sky, Sky, Sky Dash? Yes. Yep. Okay, yes. okay. That is absolutely I, I don't know. the name of that. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> Do, why is everything in the, like, everything in these games is just, you know, bouncy bubbles, CP zap, uh, uh, like, I don't know. <laughs> I was not expecting Sky Dash, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, such a such a serious name for such a non-serious game. But anyway, uh, that's how we get back to the town so quickly. That is the replacement for the ancient move of fly in this game. And yeah, 
Now we basically can return to any town or city we previously visited in a second. Yeah, the only, it looks like based off of the trackers, the only Pokemon that our runners really want to get here is Ghastly. Uh, due to the nature of the floor's layout, uh, not a lot of Pokemon can really spawn at one time here. So seeing any Pokemon at all is kind of a miracle in Tower, I'll, whether that be Ghastly, Zubat, or the, the infamous Terra Cubone. Uh, Golbat and Chansey and Haunter can also spawn here, I should mention. But really, our runners just want to see Ghastly to kind of lock in that catch route uh, for the remainder of the race. There's also Cubone in the tower. However, I think, I believe both runners caught it in Rock Tunnel. Yes, they both, looks like they both have it marked on the trackers. We'll be evolving into Marowak. Uh, Ghastly on Legacy Street. Oh, very Ooh. close to okay. uh, passing that trainer, but manages to to tag that Ghastly before it can move any further. I'm going to take the opportunity to switch to Ultra Balls and nab the Ghastly so that it stands right in place to get a hopefully nice or a great throw on it. Uh, still a very favored favored catch, even if it doesn't hit the circle, I believe. I counted it out to be about 83 to 85% for the Ghastly. 81.4% uh, if lured, uh, which it is. Uh, so, basically just landing a Hydro Pump. <laughs> Spoiler alerts for later, we'll be seeing a couple of those. Yeah, Dino, why bring up, of all the inaccurate moves in Pokémon, why would you bring up Hydro Pump? Hmm. I wish Clueless. we could write, I wish we could route out Hydro Pump in this game. Uh, Hydro Pump, you'll see this very soon. Um, very strong water move, Starmie will have it as it uh, learns at level 45 in its Staryu form. 80% uh, accurate. That's all I'm going to say. It's really 50-50. Either you land or you don't. Yep. Cola runners have their fire blast. Fire red runners have their blizzards. Let's go runners have the hydro pump. Yep. Uh, Zimlik opting to play it very safe, taking it, uh, grabbing the stack of ultra balls. Manages that to... Was very that was close exceptionally to the close. Scene. Yep. Yeah, as soon as you pass those gravestones going horizontally. Nice Terra Cube on Luggy screen, by the way. Uh, a cutscene triggers, and when cutscenes trigger in this game, uh, they despawn all surrounding Pokemon. Uh, so very clutch that Zimlik was able to course correct and grab the, the Ghastly. Uh, not going for the, just the solo throw, not nabbing. respect yeah. it. Just one one thing I wanted to, to comment on, Zimlik demonstrating pretty much the reason why Good idea to the nab the Ghastly. It is a very rowdy Pokemon. Sips around all over the place. However, exactly. a catch is still a catch, so we should move. Yeah, we're moving. Both runners. Yeah, I would say due to Zimlik being two Pokemon ahead, probably technically ahead at this point. Again, still very close race within 20 to 30 seconds at this point. Uh can be decided by anything, including this next fight. Or the last real scary Jesse and James fight that there is. Um, especially considering that we are still very underleveled at this portion of the game. Uh, Pika and Eevee probably being around at level 29 or 30, depending on how the XP has been so far. Whereas Weezy and Arbok coming in at a staggering, I believe, level 34, level 35 here. So, exceptionally scary. Do you see the puppy on screen? Yep. Pika Look will away, take Chad. Look away. Yes. This puppy is very noble. It serves as our plus two special attack boost. Uh, goes down to Poison Jab from Arbok. Uh, the reason Pika brings in the, the Growlithe. Uh, unfortunate poison there. Uh, shouldn't be too bad, though, as we'll just heal up Pikachu on the next turn. Uh, yeah. Both Weezing and Arbok will see a kill on the Growlithe, so they'll double up into it, uh, doubling up into the Pikachu. As you can see, Sludge Bomb dealing that much damage, any additional damage will most assuredly knock the Pika out. Like, yeah, unfortunately getting poisoned uh, in uh, both Jesse and James 2 and Jesse and James 3. Yeah, Simlik, uh, Machop going down there, uh, 
hopefully we'll end up electing to revive it sooner than later. Um, possibly meant to bring out the Rhyhorn instead of mm. the Machop there, uh, as you don't really need to worry about Rhyhorn evolving or anything. Just a little extra time loss on that end. Uh, but Eevee setting up the Glitzy Glow to protect against Weezing's special attacks. Uh, going to take down the Arbok with a bouncy level, followed by the Weezing not too long after that. Leggy getting through the fight just fine on her end. And Pika finally leveling up to 30. Uh, not that we need Pikachu anymore, or Eevee after this fight for that matter. Leggy rounding out the fight, and so is Simlick. Oh, I just realized how adorable the artwork on the wall is. Oh my gosh, the Lapras! <laughs> I love it. The Lapras, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never noticed that until you had just mentioned it. That's so, <laughs> that's so precious. I think there's like a, like a creepy poster or some like thing about how, like. Who is it? Green is like Fuji's like deceased daughter in this game. I don't. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't oh. know. No, first time I heard of that, but no, no, first time I heard of that. <laughs> I don't know. I saw it on Tumblr once. Anyway. <laughs> oh well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, puppy evolved. Hell yeah, we all. Yeah, love puppy, today, right? big puppy. Arcanine is Arcanine is like my favorite legendary Pokemon. I, I love it so much. <laughs> Yeah, it is, like, in the Pokedex, literally called Legendary Pokemon. That yeah, is its qualifier. Yeah. Um, the anime said it. <laughs> it's a legendary. Yeah, isn't there, like, stone tablet artwork yeah, stone of tablet. the it's birds like the, and the Arcanine? Birds and, and, and then Arcanine. It's like, uh, yeah. all right. <laughs> well, in the anime, Pikachu also went for the horn during Blaine's fight and... <laughs> Thunderbolt is apparently super effective against Rhydon, so take that oh, for yeah. what you will. <laughs> Sprinklers, yep. Yeah. Speaking of Kanto gym leaders. To talk to Brock, yeah. Oh yeah, who's this? Yeah. We, got, we got some tea and, and some pewter crunchies. Yeah, Brock taking a little bit of a vacation from the pewter gym, touring, touring Celadon City, uh, giving us some tea that will be useful later. Um, as well as some Peter Crunchies, oh. which serves as a full heal. <laughs> Going to get our Diploma oh. really quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real quick, yeah. Shoutouts to Diploma Runners out there. Uh, is that the building? In yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah third yeah. floor, go go there, do all of your trades, <laughs> finish up your Diploma Run there. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, yeah. between all of that, somewhere along the line, uh, we got a, the Poke Fluid, well, the Runners got the Poke Fluid, and yeah, you know, classic Kento plot. Uh, we go and wake up the Snorlax, the Poke Flute. However, you, you get you get hit by a tutorial, like so out of nowhere. It, it's so jarring, but yes, believe it or not, Chad Room, this is a tutorial for a wild Pokemon fight. Um, the runners have seen how many uh, you know wild Pokemon and COD, how many wild Pokemon by now, and also you know fought with Planet Trainers and Team Leaders. Uh, yeah, let's 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 go through a catch tutorial. Sorry, through a wild Pokemon battle tutorial, one hour and fifty minutes in. Uh, yeah, pretty. As Greta mentioned, uh, well, is it running away is a valid tactic? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Snorlax being very unviable to catch in an any percent route. Uh, so electing to run away from it. Ghost types do have the inherent advantage of being able to oh, run away from scary. anything. That was a very scary pass. <laughs> I don't know I've how you make seen that. anything like that. <laughs> but as long as you hug the lower end of that fence uh, and you don't press up on the control stick, you can pass that just fine. Leggy getting both a duck and a pony on her screen. Very, very nice. Uh, Zimwick seeing a small bird that will be used to evolve twice. One yep. catch, three basically three catches for the price of one. No, so Pidgey, that Pokemon that's been around for like pretty much the entire game, all, we've always been ignoring it. It was deliberate uh, because in this route you can get a PG that, like Dynam mentioned, is high enough level that it'll reach a its final stage quickly. And you know, in this game we love evolving Pokemon. We hate sitting through level up screens. <laughs> And 
and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, this is like the last spot for like any big catches, like last marathon for catches. Ooh, opponent are right on top of Simlik. Yeah, pretty much. This coupled along with the, I believe it's Route 21 C route, mm -hmm. as well as Mansion, uh, all kind of oh, combines mansion. into yeah, mansion. Yeah, mansion. All combines into the the final stretch of catches for both our runners. Oh, uh, unfortunately, out. getting the breakout. Um, so I'm like going to raz the ponyta, not electing to not use the ultras quite yeah. yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but at least with the Ooh, at excellent. least with the raz, it'll uh, it's very likely to get in. Uh, it is 87.9% to get in without a Raz, so a Raz with double grades all but guarantees it. Um, but both runners catching the Pony at the exact same time. Uh, Level like, 39 Pony. Yes. Really, really optimal. Very important that it's level 39 also. Lured Pokemon on this route come in at level 39, uh, otherwise it will come in anywhere between, I believe, 33 and 38. And yeah. Ponyta evolves into Rapidash at level 40. Mm -hmm. um, which is very important because Rapidash is going to be uh, Zimlik's right Pokemon of choice, going to menu immediately evolve the Ponytail with that rare candy, the rare candy. That, that was picked up earlier. Uh, going to use it immediately. Leggy likely going to hold on to the Arcanine because it is essentially just as fast as Rapidash, going to elect to do that menu a little bit later as she finishes up her catches on Route 17. Picking up an elixir that will be used a little bit later to restore some much needed. Oh, is that an uh, Eevee? Points. I can't tell. I'm not oh. a rat. Unclear. <laughs> Unclear. Unclear. Uh, Unclear. Eevee. Obviously, someone's like, not going to get an Eevee during <laughs> this run. Already has one. Yeah, lol. <laughs> is an option on Pika. Uh, you can evolve Eevee with a Firestone. Uh, nice glowing Doe Duo on Luggy's Ooh. screen. Essentially done with catches on this route now. Uh, Eevee is not a great catch, um, even with double ultras, no. uh, especially without getting silver raspberries at this point. Yeah, I can confirm. Yeah, shoutouts to all our AOP runners that need to catch three Eevees on this round. <laughs> yeah, shoutouts to diploma experience. Shoutouts to the crazy people that decided to shiny hunt for an Eevee on this route. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I did want to mention um, the Silver Raspberries, uh, just pretty much an upgraded version of the Raspberry. I, I don't know why they couldn't just, you know, implement like a new type of berry and they, they just did that, but That's I guess confusing. it is what it is. No, it's not confusing. Mul multiple berries that do the same thing. Nah, oh, but come on. You'll never guess that there's another tier of raspberries, by the way. <laughs> You'll never guess it. Yep. A golden raspberry. Uh, but anyway, I had actually something more relevant to say, and I just came up with that at, at the spot. I forgot, so I'll shut up now. Uh, oh. <laughs> All right. Don't throw the game, throw oh. Pokeballs Don't instead. Don't throw the game, oh throw gosh. Pokeballs instead. <laughs> <laughs> I have never read that sign no. before. <laughs> but that's that's, like, that's yeah. the first time I've seen Honestly, that. Honestly, like... That's so funny. Words to live by in a speedrun. Don't throw the so game. Funny. Throw Pokeballs instead. <laughs> <laughs> Run is grabbing a Leggy grabbing a Pitchy <laughs> and Simla <laughs> grabbing a fish. Um that could possibly be used later in the uh, yes. We we joke about Psyduck being a fish. It's a, yeah. it's a running gag. Ooh, an uh, Eevee. Oh, Eevee! <laughs> Glowy Eevee. Time for Flareon strats. Shut up. <laughs> Luggy taking a very safe route through the trainers. I I mean that unironically. Uh, <laughs> these trainers have little to no vision. Like <laughs> they have like one, one tile. <laughs> yeah. So you can effectively line yourself up with the the right side of that uh, don't throw a pokeball sign, and just holds essentially straight down. Maybe you need to like curve a little bit, but. Uh, gets you through all the trainers just fine. Shout out to Spider, who I learned that from. <laughs> that was so good. When he imparted that knowledge onto us.
But yeah, uh, we have reached Fuchsia. Uh, however, we are not quite there on the 50 bonds, so we would get kicked out of Koga. Uh, Koga's gym. A certain category uh, would be done by this point in time, however, not not this race. <laughs> yeah, we still need... Lady still needs 10 catches to go. Zemlik still needs 12 catches to go. Uh, didn't see if Zemlik actually caught a Doduo. It's not marked on his tracker. So might need to come up with uh, a little bit extra for that. Actually, I saw Duck on Zimlik's screen. He's probably going to mark stuff in a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, we got Sea Skim, Surfy Surf, whatever you want to call it, over on Luggy's screen. Allows you to navigate your way over to Cinnabar Island after a quick lure and fly through the town map. Uh, Leggy going to grab that Pidgey, good call, putting in the party as soon as possible in order to get at the two levels that it needs to evolve. Uh, going to drop off the Arcanine, grab that Doduo, slam into the party, and basically is all set in terms of party management for the rest of the game. Pretty much, yep. Yeah. Uh, the other two catches that she has planned, um, I see Lapras and Porygon, those are gift Pokemon. Oh, and coughing. That is a yeah. catch, actually. Yes. Uh, Leggy will be grabbing Grimer, as that is a Pikachu exclusive, whereas Zimlick uh, will yeah, be Grimer. aiming for, yeah. for coughing. Eh, poison Pokemon, Levitate, you know, Potato Potato. Yeah, I was literally looking at the wrong tracker, but it's fine. Uh, many Tentacle on Leggy's screen. Uh, none of the... Okay, I stand corrected. There is okay. a star. Time to roll the star you gotcha. Let's see that yes. CP. Today we've got 1016 on Leggy's screen. Not the best star, uh, but it is a star. Um, going Not to... stellar. Oh no, Joy-Con moments incoming. <laughs> oh, Joy-Con moment. All right, uh, great with, I don't know if she managed to Raz or Silver Raz. Nice Starmie nice on star me. <laughs> exactly. Nice Starmie, okay, so I'm locating uh, uh, his star 1047. Yeah, both below the 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 mean of 1062, I believe, is the average star. So not fantastic yeah. stars. We'll have to see, again, CP is just a number. CP where the points are made up, etc., etc. Yep. In insert who's line quote here. Um, so we'll actually have to see when they level up their Staryu and Mansion with some rare candies, and then as it evolves into Starmie and we teach it Scald. Uh, what yeah, CP CP's a lot. From all that, CP is it's an indicator. It's not a clear indicator. It's not a good indicator in my opinion either. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll see the nitty gritty of the stats uh, real soon. However, um, it is a thing with Let's Go Run that stellar runs just, yeah, they end in non-stellar Starbies. <laughs> Usually tends to be a thing. Alright, uh, I don't have anything to say about Lucky Star. <laughs> yeah, that is, uh... This star needs love. Uh, there is a very real possibility that... Leggy may elect to pick up an extra rare candy just to boost its stats a little bit higher because that is not great. Um, Zimlik, we'll see how his star fares. Hopefully, that it is. There's. Oh. Wait, huh? Hello. Well, sorry. <laughs> uh, hello. <laughs> okay. okay. Quick, ditch the star, acquire star Wait. me instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Do not do that. Know, get, yeah, get the star mid out of here. I'm going for a real star peak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Starmate did have 1462 CP. According 1462. To <laughs> oh my god. Best star that we've seen so far. Yeah, you would never catch that though, for real. <laughs> yeah, I believe the reason why is because Starmie, if caught, does not come with Psychic, does Correct. not come with Hydro Pump. So you're kind of out of luck when it comes to... Uh, Mean to use it on Agatha, Champ, etc. 110 special attack at 46. 114 speed. I think that just barely outspeeds the Ninetales. Uh, Zimlik, seeing a Magmar, going to run away from it, does not have... Neither of these runners have any reason to catch Magmar, unfortunately. 
Uh, oh, come on, Dynam, educate me on the magma strats. Come on. Uh, Magmar, Lord, Fire Punch, Flamethrower, plus two either way. Okay, we're done here. Neither of these runners are going to be catching <laughs> Magmar. Uh, all they need to do chat is fill out their their cash route with either Grimer or Coughing, um, and they will be solid for evolutions for the rest of the run. Uh, I do know that looks like both of them have Jojuo, means that both of them can go the, the guaranteed X attack route. Uh, no need to risk any Fire Blast shenanigans. No need to catch Magmar, unfortunately. Oh, lordy. Uh, I didn't catch the stats on Zimlik Star quite yet. Uh, we'll see uh, on It hasn't Skull. evolved yet, yeah, so... We'll see here, though. Oh. <laughs> it's fast. <laughs> yeah, and that's we'll all see. I have to say about it. It's fast, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can we, I don't know if you can see the stats post-evolution here. I don't know if... No, this doesn't go to the stat screen. Yeah. Yeah, but 93, 93 speed for a level 45 star you is decently fast. Should get you through all the, the speed threshold checks that you need. I am a, kind of worried about Leggy's star um, to begin with. Uh, Leggy pulling out a nice piece of tech here. Uh, saw that the Grimer uh, spawn wanted to get into a position to pass it immediately. So what you can do apparently in this game, uh, learned this like very recently, you can block the trainer because, because trainers, when they see you, they obviously want to walk towards you. You can block them with the second controller and they will just do that little exclamation point, I see you, and then fight you from where they are. Uh, but uh, have you met Ted? Because Ted is the thing. Leads with an electrode, not very, not very fun for our water-based main. Uh, Dodo is going to go down. Uh, this means that uh, Leggy is probably going to take a bed heal or possibly revive slash Cammy the Dodo duo to get it right back up, so that we can, so that she can uh, get it leveled up to Dodrio. And likewise on Zimlik's screen, uh, going to X special attack with Starmie. Uh, has Rapid Ash in the second part. Uh, gets gets Thunderbolted on the Rapid Ash. Definitely what you want to see coming out of here. Uh, so which means that Zimlik will not need to take the bed heal nor heal Starmie in battle. As Luggy gets another evolution in the form of Golduck. But yeah. Uh, I am, as I was mentioning before, kind of worried about Luggy's star. Uh, this next speed threshold that outside of Ninetales and Rapidash that you want to consider is that Rivals Pidgeot uh, after uh, Giovanni 3 has 127 speed. If you speed tie or do not outspeed it outright, uh, remember that somehow, for whatever reason, that Pidgeot still has Sand Attack. Um, uh, Luggy making a very precarious pass there, but making it through just fine. Say hello to Glowing Ditto, AOP Runners and Shambles. <laughs> Zimelik grabbing the, the Firestone as he does have, uh, I believe he has Vulpix and Ninetales marked mm -hmm. uh, as planned last I checked. Look who it is. Please run away. This is not good. <laughs> you see that red circle on a Pokemon? You bolt. <laughs> yeah, you book it. Yeah, both our runners. Leggy making out with the secret key, which is the Blaine gym requirement to get in. Uh, Zimlik not too far behind there either. Both hello Magmar, goodbye Magmar. Do not need you oh. this run. It just dawned on me. It, wait, so I'm not doing a bit here. Hold on. The the plot reason to go to the mansion is the secret key to get into Blaine's gym. I mean, it's less plot, more just like you go in, you grab it, you get out. Well, yeah, and... well no, no, but, but but you know what I mean. I, was, I completely yeah. forgot about that. I completely <laughs> forgot that that was the reason. <laughs> yeah, in, in the original Gen 1 games, uh, Blaine's gym is actually locked, and you cannot get in without the secret key. Whereas yeah. the secret key is just like a kind of like a 
pass to get in. Yeah, look up. <laughs> uh, but quiz but anyway, time. Blaine's gym. Dynam, you want to explain what's going on here? Yeah, uh, you have to pass a trivia quiz. Um, the the correct answers are one, two, two, two or three, and then any. Uh, if you get a question wrong, you must fight a trainer that has one Pokemon. This has happened multiple times during this tournament, and it is a very unfortunate time loss. Uh, if so, uh, fun trivia fact, you can answer either the second, as I mentioned, you can answer the second or the third option on the fourth question. Uh, for TM28 Tombstoney, what's that is a valid answer. Um, yep. The more you know. And I believe for the last question, you can answer literally anything. <laughs> Yeah, just to recap for chat, uh, these stars are stars. Th that is all. <laughs> star me of all time. <laughs> these star stars me ever made. Neither of these stars will hit any ranges. Uh, Leggy's star is dangerously close to uh, speed, uh, not meeting the speed threshold on, uh, on Rival 5. So we will have to see what that speed stat is come Giovanni 3. Uh, I don't believe anybody has chosen any question or any answer for the last question yet. Uh, yeah, beyond beyond the first one, like there's no real reason to. You just mash through the first uh, option and that's it. It's time loss. True. But yeah, um, with Blaine though, and now that we have our Starmie in tow, for better or worse, um. Now we start the gym marathon. We're gonna be knocking them out real quick, one after another. Um, I don't recall the exact order, but I know that we start with Blaine and we end on Giovanni. Because while you can do all of these gyms that you skipped in any order, Giovanni must be the last gym leader that you fight. Oh, oh my God! I just pulled that Giovanni is the eighth uh, gym leader. Sorry, <laughs> Chadron. Yeah, there, there is a very standard order for the speedrun. Depending on how your items are, uh, some people will elect to flip the order of the next two gems in uh, Surge and Erica. Uh, say, perhaps you are almost out of super potions, or maybe you've used one too many status heals. Uh, there is an option to do a quick pet stop in Vermilion uh, before you enter Surge's gem to do a little bit of a shop there. Uh, most runners will elect to uh, do their final shop in Saffron City post uh, Sylph Plot. Uh, but depending on what you need and whether or not you're versed with it, I definitely am not. Uh, you can definitely make a pit stop in Vermilion to grab some, some extra potions or full heals or whatever you might need. Uh, but Leggy just going straight on to Surge. Unfortunately, didn't get the Ponyta to evolve quite when she wanted it to. Yeah. Generally, you want to have the Pony evolve by the time you're finished playing. Uh, but due to the... I believe it was a great throw on the Grimer. Just a little bit uh, shy of the XP needed. But Surge should be able to push that Pony from 39 to 40 just fine. I want to say it's pretty much guaranteed. I don't know if there's like the uh, thread of uh, the opponent going to 41, which would incur like a minimal time loss, but not sure. Not an expert on the XP science for this game. Yeah, if you if Ponyta is the last thing that you catch, um, assuming you get a decent catch in the star, uh, excellent on Grimer should get it to 40 by Blaine. Um, if you don't get a first throw on the Grimer, for example, it might be a little bit longer. Some people will luck to, if they know that they cannot get the Pony to uh, 40 on Pikachu, will just candy it on the same menu that you do everything with Starmie and your party management, so on and so forth, and then elect to pick up an extra candy along the way, whether that is the candy that is found in the basement floor of Mansion or the candy that is right by the Lapras in Sulfco. I want to bring up to attention, did, did y'all see that? Did, did Leggy guess the trash cans We're not doing first try? Every <laughs> single time, y'all know. I'm sorry, this, dude, dude, this sorry. Is a bit, no. bit, know, bit, yeah, cans, I'm good cans. I'm taking all the bits. Fire red leaf green. <laughs> sorry. Can we we'll talk about up, anything yeah. else in this gym? Can we talk about how there are red and blue cans, by the way, signifying both 
uh, positive and negative polarity due to this being an electric gym. Magnemite oh, wow. having uh, <laughs> having those on its magnets as well. Magnets, magnets. Yep. How do they work? How do they work? Yep. Dude, we have a red and blue tracker on our runners. Oh my gosh! It's almost as if <laughs> this was planned. Anyway, we got the Rapid Ash thing fully. Yes, Sluggy finally getting that Rapid Ash. Uh, definitely important uh, coming up to Celadon because Celadon has a lot more movement to get to the gym than Vermilion does. Uh, so going to be speeding along on that Rapid Ash just fine for the rest of the game. Uh, Zimlik not too far behind in uh, finishing out Surge either. Both going to be healing up their Starmie to full HP, both going to be teaching Starmie Thunderbolt because Starmie, like it is in Gen 1, uh, is a jack-of-all-trades, learns basically any special move that Cracked you want to teach it. <laughs> yep. uh, my my tinfoil hat theory is that they swapped like a normal type Pokemon's uh, learn set with Starmie, and that's how you reach that result, because not many vanilla water types learn Thunderbolt or Thunder, like, for no reason, but Starmie hey. do. <laughs> hey, Gyarados can learn Thunderbolt and Flamethrower, if I recall correctly. Dude, dude, Gyarados can learn Thunder Wave. I mean, Starmie also can, but in, like, recent VGC, uh, Thunder Wave Gyarados has popped off, and I'm like, oh, oh it, 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 it can do that. It can do that since the 90s. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I am not versed in VGC, but I I trust some of our runners who have been, like like Fangy did, in the other race not too long ago. Uh, but all to say, no Thunder Wave here. We don't want status because status is no, slow. No, no, no. Status is icky. Yeah, icky, stinky. We don't like it. And then... Leggy getting into the little maze. There's no real uh, threat of the trainer seeing you, unlike in other trainer skips. Uh, as long as you take the inside track on on these bushes, you are totally fine and will not uh, hit these trainer's visions at all. Using yeah. Choppy Chop to get all these bushes down on the way to Erica. Zimlek doing the little slicey slice outside the gym and entering the gym not too far behind as well. Choppy Chops is such, a, such an unserious game, I swear to God. It's chopped down, but, you know, alliterations are a thing. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, yeah, there's a uh, moment in this gym, not as bad as it looks, just have the corners, as Dynam said. I do want to point out the requirement to get into this gym. Eyes uh, to bring a cute Pokemon, and um, yeah, you can present any Pokemon. I I, I don't know. I got nothing. You, you can show you can show it a Grimer, and they're like, "Oh, that's so cute." Yeah, you can pass. And it's yeah, like, it's okay, so cute. I just want to rub its face, <laughs> yeah. my face into oh, yeah. it. I just want to rub my face into it. Yeah, to a Grimer. Yeah, it smells so good. Wish. It smells so good. <laughs> Okay, all the same, I really... Chop, cutty, cut, come on, any more alliterations in chat? Come on, chat room, hit me with your best. I do like Alolan Grimer and Muck's color scheme, though. It definitely looks, like, very tie-dye-esque. I like it. Yeah. Erica is just press Psychic the video game. Nothing, mm -hmm. nothing really see here. Uh, but we're about to come up to... Very, very variable, uh, a very variable portion of the run. Uh, in blue, into Archer, into after Sabrina, Koga, into uh, our runners making decisions on whether or not they want to perhaps risk things or play the safe route. Uh, as we come up into the last hour or so yep, of, of the yeah i do wonder if either of them are watching and know how close they are and if that's gonna influence their decisions or not yeah they are very close uh unfortunate misclick on zimlick screen thunderbolts onto tangla uh tangla does i believe no sleep powder so could have been very very punishing if that was the case luckily just gets a mega drain uh does mean that zimlick will have to burn an extra super potion uh, which is not great for the Archer 2 fight coming up, but aside from that, not particularly punished outside of that. 
that Leggy finishing up the fight, exiting the gym, I'm going to fly right back to Celadon because it is much faster to do that than it is. Oh to... yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, we fly into the same town that we're already in. <laughs> exactly. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, Doe Duo is not evolved, which may. All right. So we will see Fire Blast from Leggy. It looks like. Um, oh. Yeah, Doe Duo. Unfortunately, uh, Drill Peck from Dodrio is guaranteed at plus two with an X attack onto. Uh, Blue's Executor, which is really the only thing that Stormy can't really handle in this run on its own, due to its uh, Grass Psychic typing. Uh, Dojo itself is a range, due to it being uh, synced to Modest, as we had mentioned earlier with the Synchronized and Celadon, uh, is anywhere between a 1 in 16 at minimum attack to Guaranteed, I believe. Um, so, Leggy opting to not risk that and go for the less risky comparatively uh 85 percent accurate fire blast on rapidash whereas zimlik as we just saw just evolved dodrio at the end of that fight just in time to bring it into slot two I'm gonna do a little bit of party management here I'm going to drop off from a choke into the box bringing dodrio into slot two and we'll be seeing two different fights coming up for entering sylphco None of which are the fights that I would have preferred to see, but that's besides the point. Nice Abra on Zimlick's screen. Abra. Too bad. Abra, indeed. Uh, no need for catches at this point. Uh, both runners are solid in their evolutions. Zimlik just needing Pidgeot and Golduck to supplement the two gift Pokemon, while Leggy just needing Dodrio and Muck evolutions. And they'll both be set to enter Koga's gym in a little bit. What I should been here since I gobble up pretty much every form of Pokemon media. Uh, you might have noticed that we do have a rival in this game. Um, and it's not blue. Blue it's is not, blue. not our, our rival, as you would expect from any game that takes place in Kanto. Uh, we have a rival um, called Trace. Ooh. Oh, Jeez. that's Ooh. really Oh, that's bad. Oh, oh that's no. really unfortunate. So this is this is what happens when you get Ouch. the fifteen percent miss on on Fire Blast. Is that uh, the more unfortunate of two things can happen there? Executor could set up Light Screen freely. Uh, which just means extra X item usage, uh, but instead went for the power whip, saw a kill on Starmie. Uh, Rapidash is going to take out the Executor. Leggy's Rapidash going to. Rapidash does it now, yeah. Yeah, Leggy's going to uh, revive Starmie here, ensure that it gets at least some XP from that, uh, from that kind of loss. Deciding what to do here, going to opt to try and take out the Charizard with the two Pokemon that are currently available in. Uh, Rapid Ash and Grimer should be able to take it out in two turns, assuming that the next Fire Blast hits. Uh, yeah. This does mean... So, you had mentioned before that uh, like experience is spread throughout the party. Uh, I believe... Please quote me if I'm wrong. I don't actually know this for a fact. Uh, Pokemon that are out in battle get more experience than the Pokemon that are, uh, that are in your pocket. Yeah, so that's correct. Um, so... If Starmie were to, say, spend the rest of that fight in the back pocket, uh, there might be some issues with experience that Leggy would have to deal with. I think this should be fine still to do the standard menu after Sabrina. Uh, Starmie hitting level 47 on this kind of nails it down. Uh, Doduo, thankfully, evolving. Grimer, not going down, will also get enough XP to evolve. Yeah. Thankfully, Pokemon still evolve, even they're knocked out. Yeah, if if a Pokemon gets knocked out in battle, but has leveled up in battle, it will evolve. Um, mm. But we do see Dodrio over on Luggy's screen. And then Zimlik uh, having the 100% accurate move in Drill Pack. It will get through blue just fine. And is now slightly ahead of 
uh, yep. of leggings. Yeah, Zimbly had a <laughs> Zimbly had a hella clean uh, blue fight. Could change all in the next like ten seconds. The most important, yeah, true. Unfortunate that that Rabbitish was a complete jobber and decided to miss the most important fire mm. blast, and then yeah. landed every single one after that. Yeah, it was, it was like very the wall for, for Leggy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would agree that was one hundred percent like the correct play to go for because Dodo wasn't involved. Just unfortunate mm -hmm. of that fifteen percent miss. Uh, but as you mentioned, Archer two, we have seen many runners. Uh, Get bodied by Archer 2, we've seen some Dreadful runners get... fight. <laughs> Dreadful fight. So it's we're gonna... a two on two. Yeah, true doubles. Trace goes, I'm helping. Uh this is a good opener for Zim Yeah, self destruct, uh, yeah. yeah boom. boom into no protect means that both Pokemon go down uh very easily. Muck doesn't get a chance to even minimize or toxic or anything. So I'm just gonna like, can take it down. This has the potential for a three-turn fight if Cubone decides to cooperate and boomerang the Raticate that's going to come out from the front. Uh, Leggy going to do the exact same thing here, Psychic into Muck, as it has many status ailments and very annoying moves. Uh, gets the Thunderbolt version of the fight. Can be okay if Electro decides to self-destruct on turn two, making it a four-turn fight. Well, Cubone helps giant air quotes. <laughs> but yeah, the bad thing of this being a, a true double, sort of like a like a multi battle, is that we don't have our partner Pokemon out, so we can cheat and use like an X item on our partner's turn while Starmie makes everything explode. It's it's dicey, and we're also dealing with a dumb dumb AI partner that not always takes the best course of action. Yeah, Archer 2 is very volatile. <laughs> yeah. Personally, not a fan of this fight. Don't think anybody is a fan of this fight. Actually, looking like both runners are going to get a... Ooh! Double crit by the Cubone. That's actually kind of huge. Okay. Uh, huge. Huge. So, finishing out that fight very well. Leggy, not going to be too far behind due to the turn 2 Electrode self-destruct, which takes out uh, half of Raticate's HP, Cubone bumeranging it down from half to zero. And Golbat, not having Protect, will go down very easy to a Psychic. Uh, so, honestly, very acceptable Archers for, for both Zimlik and Leggy. All uh, things considered, yeah. Yeah, Zimlik just holding on to that threat of a lead um, coming out of blue due to the unfortunate Fire Blast miss. But yeah. I'll go ahead and finish my, 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 my rant, my oh, fast please do, please do. No, I was just gonna say that yeah, Blue is its own is his own separate character. So is uh, well, we previously alluded to Leaf, uh, sorry, Green, uh, and Red is also in this game as its own separate character. Uh, the funny thing that not many might know is that they're actually based on their manga counterparts. Um, in the manga, um, Red chose Bulbasaur as his starter, and Blue chose Charizard, and. Eventually, if you do enough content in this game, especially the post game, you can get to fight also uh, red and green, and you'll see that they have the corresponding starters from the manga. And yeah, I think it's fun because it's funny because over the years, you know, Charizard has historically been more popular and favorited by Game Freak, and Charizard has also been attributed to red in other forms of Pokemon media, like Pokemon Masters or spin offs, or I know they did that in one anime. Uh, but yeah, this stays true to the original uh, 97 manga, which I think is cute. I don't know why they decided to put him in this game. It creates a lot of complicated canon discussion and discourse towards the that you, you, nobody should care about. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's just a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. I guess that I didn't. That actually kind of makes sense now. Oh, did I robot about that? Did it, did, it, did, it go, did it go RoboCop? Sorry. Yeah, I think I think we are going deep, 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 deep. So, should be fixed pretty soon. Uh, please, please bear with. Uh, there, it's the and Levy getting into the the final Justin and James fight. Uh, Thunderbolt into Dodrio on some side is very good. Uh, we don't need Dodrio for anything. Rapidash has the, even though we did see the, the misgivings of Fire Blast, it can stomp the Weezing, which will cause it to flinch. 
possibly. I believe has a 30% chance of flinch. Uh, unfortunately, gets a T-Bolt off from Starmie, which means that Starmie will uh, Psychic the Weezing to bring it down, as well as Rapid Ash going to Potion Starmie to bring it up to full before the next fight in Giovanni 2. All right, looks like we are uh, out of robot mode. Uh, Yay, welcome back. Yay. <laughs> well, welcome back, us, I suppose. Grant did not join the robot over... Uh, I you know, was not. The robot not. overlords, you know, did not I, participate. I refuse. A little, bit, a little bit crispy, a little bit deep fried. But <laughs> we made it out of the frying pan and into Giovanni 2. Uh, not really a bad fight. Uh, all you have to do is set up one X special attack and then hit Scald. Uh, didn't see whether that was fake out or slash. It looked like the damage made me feel like it looked like a slash or a fake out crit. Could be a little bit of an issue going into uh, the next fight in Sabrina, uh, just due to possibly psychic into special defense drops. So Zimlik so will have to pay a little bit of closer attention to his HP. Leggy getting fake out, and that's Starmie holding up very well in terms of its HP defense combo. Uh, so should be relatively healthy to go into uh, the Mr. Mime fight for sure. Giovanni 2 is not a scary fight. Yeah, Giovanni 2 is not scary. Geo 1, scary for Eevee. Uh, scary for Pika if underleveled or minus attack. Geo 3, generally pretty scary if you're running it in a PB setting. Uh, but there have been safe strats that have been developed which all but ensure that Starmie can survive the onslaught of Dugtrio's Earthquake and make it through the fight alive. There we are, forced to pick up the Master Ball. Hopefully yep. we won't need it for anything. <laughs> yep, yep. As long as our runners have been tracking things correctly, uh, we'll not need to use the Master Ball uh, to catch any additional Pokémon. The only two Pokémon that are left to pick up as mentioned before, are going to be the Lapras as well as the Porygon. Uh, Zimlik making a pit stop in 10F to grab a rare candy. Uh, interesting play here. Interesting play. Or, or Max Revive? Oh, Max Revive. So the rare candy is going to be the one on the south. The east one is the Max Revive. Possibly okay. knew about the Max Revive, don't know. Uh, but picking up that rare candy to possibly ensure some ranges down the line. We do remember that. Both of these Starmies have exceptionally poor special attack. Um, Zimlik pushing his Starmie to 50 rather than 49. Uh, 50 being a damage increasing threshold. Um, and then later on, we'll be reaching 54 likely around the time that uh, he reaches Lance. Uh, Lapras get for both runners almost uh, at the same time. <laughs> Lapras get, indeed. Uh, hopefully, hopefully going to push that Starmie to be a little bit better in its endeavors to hit some ranges. Yeah, essentially, like, still tied. Like, Leggy exiting self at 50 on screen, Zimlik exiting at 55 means that these runners are five seconds apart going into the end game. <laughs> This has been a tight race from the beginning. It's been a tight race in the middle, and it sure as heck is going to be a tight race going into the the final gym oh boy. and E4 gauntlet. Yeah, E4 is going to be something. Yeah. Again, as as I forgot who, which one of you mentioned it, but if these runners are keeping track of like where each other's at, it's going to be very interesting to see if they alter their their approaches to the end game. Maybe take some risky maneuvers. Maybe whoever's in front is just going to play safe, or maybe the person back is going to play safe and hoping the other person is going to take a take a fall somewhere down the line. Uh, doing their final shop of the game, going to pick up some hypers, some X items, uh, possibly some full heals depending on their current uh, current healing counts. And, and repels. Then, and repels. Very important. We have yep. not really seen repels used thus far for their 
uh, intended use. Uh, we saw Luggy repelling Route uh, 10 earlier to kind of reset the route, but repels essentially just ensuring that because they both have the 50 Pokemon that they need, uh, no longer need any more encounters, no longer need uh, any reason to encounter anything, avoiding uh, encounters to avoid that. Uh, avoids time loss, essentially. Save some time, don't run into Pokemon. Something, something, go fast. Yeah, we hate Pokemon now, chat. We don't want to see any of them. <laughs> yeah, uh, don't say that if you... Uh, you're playing Scarlet Violet Victory Road, though. I made that same <laughs> comment the other day. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't even realize it. We're out of got a bits chat room. <laughs> yeah, we gotta. We as commentators need to collectively up our game for round three. I think. We only have so many funny things to say. We ran anyway, out of bits Sabrina. So long then. Um. <laughs> Same shtick as always, um, you know, teleporters, there's always the same path. Uh, there is some bruh in this gym regarding dodging the spinners. I believe they were trainer in here spins. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it's a... Uh, well, we don't want to fight anybody and just get to Sabrina as quick as possible. Yeah, every trainer in this particular gym has a set rotation pattern specifically, like the one that's currently on Zimlick oh. screen will only ever look left and up. Uh, so depending on the cycle in which you like, are able to take the teleporters, um, as you can see, uh, you can either take a teleporter slow as your character adjusts, or you can take a teleporter fast, where you line yourself up with the cardinal or intercardinal directions of a uh, of a teleporter to get on there as fast as possible, skipping the adjust animation. Uh, but you can, if you see where some uh, one of the trains is looking, you know which way the train is going to look next, essentially. As both of our runners sending up on Sabrina's Mr. Mime right now. Leggy getting light screen turn one, which is generally what you want to see. Simlik also getting light screen turn one, which means they'll both uh, set up two X special attacks along with an X speed to outspeed the Alakazam. We'll see if either of these stars. We're hoping that they both two shot the Mr. Mime through light screen. Leggy getting over half damage done. Uh, very solid for Scald. Uh, Zimlik about to do the exact same thing here. Unfortunately, oh, okay. This is totally fine. Uh, usually, as we said, status is pretty bad because it lags. In this case, it actually kind of saves Zimlik from taking an extra turn due to the burn damage dealing a little bit extra damage to bring it over to the half threshold. So both these runners should be getting through Sabrina just fine. So excited. This is such a close race. It is. <laughs> I yeah, know. I'm gonna wait quiet for a second there, sorry. Um, very close race. All the way throughout. Like Yeah. Don't get to see this every day. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this this takes the cake for I know we've said like there have been like really close races in like the upper bracket. This has on like just overall been the closest race period, hands down, no doubt, throughout this entire round. So both of our runners going to let Caroline exit. decide. Oh, brother. <laughs> we'll get there when we get there. But for now, the next big decider is Koga. Um, we're going to see both Leggy and Slimek do oh. some final party management, going to dump everything from their party except for Starmie and Rapidash. Rapidash being our main uh, ride Pokemon and Starmie being our actual main Pokemon. I didn't catch the stats on Starmie's screen. I'll go ahead and clip that and look back on it real quick. Um, I don't expect it to <laughs> so be any good, unfortunately, but... Yeah, Koga time. Um, just way I can describe this is, um, bruh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just uh, imagine the worst cringe TikTok super humor compilation you've ever seen. Well, it manages to be a little bit worse than that. Um, 
Coke is cringe. Very cringe. Um... You gotta deal with evasion, you gotta deal with poison, you... you know... It's, uh... Yeah, yeah. there are a lot of opportunities for Pokémon to slow you down by just using Protect. And Protect. Yeah, Protect. When's a uh, Urshifu all made? TBH. <laughs> what? Urshifu. Oh yeah, cause uh... Wait, isn't that an ability? Yeah, Unseen Fist. Oh. Yeah, remember how there's no abilities I don't no know anything about game? abilities. Okay, I guess that bit is dead. Never mind, Jeff. <laughs> uh, Please, I... Mel Metal. Sure. Yeah, because sure. Steel types cannot get poisoned, if I recall correctly. Immune to poison True. cannot get poisoned. So, uh, when are we routing an alt main that uh, has a steel type? <laughs> Uh, but first, you gotta get through Kaden. Kaden, uh, as some of our runners know, can get very trolly. The Smuck yep. knows. Toxic, Moonblast, Minimize, and Protect, all which serve to hamper you in one way or another. Thankfully, gets the Protect turn one, which means that Psychic is going to hit through the next turn. And KO the Muck, followed up Did by. Did you say Moonblast? Yes. Yep. Dead Muck ass. Knows moon blast. <laughs> yeah. Nah, no shot. <laughs> poison oh type. God. Poison type that learns the fairy move that can lower your special attack by one stage, which would force oh. you to use up a psychic on the B drill, uh, because Leggy retained her special attack boost. Um, able to get through that just fine. Uh, uh -oh. Minimize on uh, uh, hits through. Uh, hits through. All right. Okay. Saved. Saved. All right. The first of potentially many minimizes. <laughs> yeah. Sim like wiping the sweat off his forehead as uh, finish up finishing up the, the fight. Beedrill's gonna protect because it usually does, and then heading straight into Koga right after. Uh, if you are pretty low on psychics and you haven't used the elixir on Caden, you do have the option to hydro pump Beedrill, uh, but of course pump is pump. Uh, no further elaborate elaboration needed on that. Nope, enough said. Anyway, Leggy has reached Koga. Let's see how this goes. Oh, no. Wheezing oh, out no. first. Oh, Dimbuk, don't go that way. Go. No. Yep. All right. Oh. I think he's found his way. <laughs> Was very close to aggroing the, the second juggler there, uh, but needs yeah. uh, just scary. fine. All right. We'll see what this opens with. Wheezing no opens with attacks, which is totally fine. Just going to psychic it down. Immediate psychic, kill it. Yeah. Uh, Leggy is going to be forced to use Psychic here um, on the Venomoth, otherwise she has a very unfavorable range with Skull. You can Skull the Venomoth with good special attack, but as we've seen with both these stars. Uh, not fantastic, expecting her to swap over to Thunderbolt to conserve some much needed Psychic uh, psychic PP. As... Yeah, PP is real tight. It's like... Yeah, Zimlik being level 50 here means that he could effectively scald the Venomoth without any issue. Uh, probably still needs to psychic the Weezing due to its special defense stat, uh, but if you've seen Maze Bit on GDQ with the damage formula, uh, levels that end in 0, 3, 5, or 8 have a higher like damage like calculation than other levels, uh, but electing to psychic through here, uh, and just to get through Koga. Leggy finishing up Koga just now. Yeah, relatively smooth Koga, I'll consider. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other weird ways that I can go, Weezing can open with Toxic, which forces you to Antidote immediately. Uh, it can also use Explosion, uh, which is fast. You'll, you'll have to heal afterwards, but it's just one Pokemon down and one more Psychic that you can save for later. The Smuck basically always protects, sometimes even protects twice, just because. Obligatory now we're getting, pushy push. Yep, yeah, now we're getting the last secret technique, pushy push. Yep, I'm gonna use that to get us through Victory Road. Um, you can use pushy push there to grab a nugget if you're running other categories of this game, but we're not running out of the categories of this game because this is... This is any percent. Not AOP, not Diploma. 
not kicked. This Joker would say we're not running a good category. Kick W. <laughs> TD. Any percent NMS is very solid. Honestly, all the categories except Bootleg Ash are solid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bootleg Ash. Who wants to sit on Route 15 catching 29 Taurus? Not me. <laughs> you know, yeah, Bootleg okay. Ash is uh, definitely science going too far. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Giovanni time. Let's see how this goes. This can be scary. Um, we'll see. Some pumps here, I think, are very critical to land. Otherwise, it takes a, a turn for the worst. But first, we gotta take a little detour. I think we're gonna learn about Mega Evolution. Yeah, we're gonna use so that, right? To a, <laughs> yeah, Mega Starmie, oh my god. <laughs> There's probably a Mega Starmie in DeviantArt, I'll be real. Of course there is. Yeah, of course. Just... <laughs> yeah. And you get like, what, what you get to, like the mega stones for the starters. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, tiny little tech thing right here on Zimlix screen. Um, if you're at the sign ish that like level, then Trace will not walk down to talk to you because you'll you'll already be on like the same plane, so we can just look right at you. So that saves a little bit of time. Oh yeah. oh yeah, they also get like Pikachu, like looking at the flowers and stuff, I forget about that. Anyway, <laughs> and now back to Viridian, because that was yeah. totally necessary. Yeah, right here, going back up the route is faster than flying back. Yeah. We did uh, what took Ash about, what, 32 episodes in the anime? <laughs> Boom. Half a minute. Less, even. I'm so glad Ash got retired, I'm not gonna lie. I I'm like a certified Ash hater. It was like, I time. was glad he was gone, and I was like, oh, maybe I'll give the anime a chance, and then I never watched it. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right here, talking to this tamer from behind so that he will not be in our way uh, in a little bit when we get over there. He'll be blocking the tile normally, because he'll walk over to you. So talking oh, yeah. to Rapidash right there. <laughs> A little, little manep for later. It's a secret we'll save for later. If you don't talk to this trainer, uh, you will need to take a, a long way around mm -hmm. and fight two additional trainers, which is slow. Yeah, what I like about Geo's gym is that I believe in every generation there's a strat like that. Like, talking to a certain trainer so that they don't move later, so you can get, so you can be faster. I think that's the thing. In, I know it's a thing in Gen 3. I don't know if it's a thing in Gen, <laughs> Gen 1. And then there's this, which I really like using the trainer so that they don't move. The yeah. support trainer. Yep. And also using the support trainer because knowing both these are special attack stats, uh, <laughs> so Leggy elected to go the, the safe route. Um, we're going to see Scald into X special here. If the star stats were any better, I believe it's 130 special attack in order to secure this. Psychic Stomp also guarantees the kill, and you save uh, going into a menu for that. Uh, we'll see if Zimlik also decides to 2C or is going to try and make up some ground and 1C of the fight. It looks like he is getting ratio currently, but is going for the 1C <laughs> fight. For a 1C fight, yeah. So, this Nidoking, King, very scary, has Megahorn, uh, can absolutely devastate your Starmie. Has uh, happened. Yes, but we want to see Hydro Pump hit, take out the Nidoking. Oh, gotcha. Uh, possibly just forgot oh. to, to 2C yeah. there. So it so. is 2C in the end. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so we'll see safe fights from both these runners after all. So, no no sweating today. Or at least not for the next five minutes. Yeah. No take. Frick, no Rare Chart, no Chansey this run. No? From both Chansey. runners. Chansey. Yeah. Is that true? There's no way. It is true, yeah. The Rare sp I, I mean, we pogged over, well, Unpogged over the Porygon, but I don't believe we saw any chances. I did see Kanga as well. Yeah, we saw Kanga, yeah. True, but I'm sure people in chat would have spammed Bonjour if we had <laughs> any chances, so seeing none, I'm going to assume 
the absence thereof. Bonjour. Alright, but we'll see both our runners more than likely. Lady Region Geo. Yes. Geo fight. Uh, you have two options for this fight, depending on how you have shopped throughout the game. Uh, Luggy taking the safe two controller version of the fight. Uh, Doug Trio has a very strong stab move in the form of Earthquake, uh, which thankfully gets reduced uh, by 25%-ish uh, if you hit multiple targets. Rapid Ash going down is actually what you want to see for this fight. Um, having an extra input for the remainder of the fight is pretty slow, and we can just revive Rapid Ash right afterward. Zimbalik going to do the exact same thing. Uh, X special starting on turn one, and then scald the rest of the turns. Ideally, Zimlex's pony also goes down and will get revived after the fight. Uh, we are going to pay very, very close attention to Leggy's star speed right here as it levels up at 50. We want to see 128, and we currently see 128. 28. All right. Oh lord. Mm -hmm. oh, Gaming. Degrees. <laughs> yes, this ensures that there will be no cringe on on rival five. Thankfully, uh, Starmy will outspeed the Pidgeot. Will get the T bolt off before Pidgeot has the chance to even move. No chance of sand attack there. I was worried for the last hour, but the star. <laughs> Pulling ahead where it matters. Uh, Zimlek going to hit level 51 either on this right on of the Nidoqueen. Uh, due to that extra rare candy, we'll pay attention to this star stats. Uh, not worried about the speed, more looking towards its defenses and special attack. We see 125. Uh, 125 is going to be, I believe, about a 10 and 16 for the Hydro Pump on Naomi. Hopefully both runners are going to elect to, to control that fight because it is very scary. Uh, but we'll get there when we get there again. Leggy reviving Rapid Ash. Zimlik going to be reviving Rapid Ash on this next menu. Both going into Rival 5. Not still exceptionally close race between the two of these runners. So that is the gym challenge completely done. All that's left is a fight against a rival, a couple checks along the way to Victory Road, a couple of unskippable trainers in Victory Road in this category, and the the final E4 boss gauntlet. Okay, there's one unskippable. There's one skippable trainer passive mount skip, but we'll get there when we get there, folks. One thing at a time. First things first. Rival five. Uh, we'll see. Leggy set up an X special attack to Thunderbolt this down. Uh, very important to X speed turn two, uh, due to the way that uh, Generation seven speed dynamics work. If you use an X speed, it won't take into effect until the turn after in which you use it, which is exceptionally important due to the fact that Jolteon natively outspeeds Starmie. Uh, no matter how many speed ABs you have, no matter how high your speed stat is at this point in the game, Jolteon will always outspeed it naturally. Uh, so setting up to plus two speed there, taking out the Marowak with Scald due to being at plus one or plus two special attack instead of plus four. And getting through the fight really well. Zimluck going to do the same thing on his side. Uh, I am aware that there is a speed threshold that you can get on Eevee due to Rapid Ash being, or not Rapid Ash, Raichu rather, being slower than Jolteon and also having weaker defenses. So you could possibly, I've heard rumors of one controlling this fight or just not setting up an X speed necessarily. So we'll... But both of these runners should be getting through just fine. Leggy exiting the Rival 5 fight at 51-51. And we'll see how far behind Zimlik is. Two pokes to go on his end of the fight.
looks like Marowak goes down. And Sunlook's going to come out of the fight at 52-32. So that's roughly a difference of 40 seconds, give or take. Still anyone's game. Victory Road, has, Victory Road has a lot of... Uh, a lot of things that can happen. <laughs> and if either of you want to elaborate on the many uh, tricks and traps of Victory Road. There are too many. <laughs> Alright, let's start from the top then. Uh, first we've got Naomi, Kangaskhan, Hydro Pump. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! I, we love it when we need to hit pumps in the video game. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, there is a very safe first, well, relatively safe first in the fight in which you to control it. I expect both Luggy and Zimluck to go for it. Um, we hope so. Yeah, uh, one controlling Naomi is exceptionally dangerous. Uh, so Starmie being part psychic type, Kangaskhan has two dark type moves in the form of Crunch, which deals a lot of damage and also can lower your defense, and Sucker Punch. Uh, which is a priority move that activates if you attack. Uh, and since we're going to want to attack Kangaskhan, it will always get it off. There is like another very niche strategy that has been brought up where you could stomp Kangaskhan, stomp being, I believe, 30% chance to flinch. If your Hydro Pump uh, accuracy plus range is less than 30 percent uh you might go for stomp and x special turn one uh bluggy does get the range somehow uh with this star <laughs> it's thankfully. just that easy it's just that easy the simple answer really is just hit it really <laughs> is hit the range for hit. uh zimlik entering the fight as well uh thankfully because of that hit luggy no longer needs to heal before the next fight uh, you do get a nice free heal from Officer Jenny after Juggler Nelson, uh, but Zimlik is also going to go ahead and X Special Hydro Pump here and just simply hit and then hit the range. It's just that easy, folks. Hit uh, does not hit the range. Rapid Ash does go down. Uh, this would have been a, more of a problem if Hydro Pump did not hit, but thankfully, Zimlik can just hit. opt to. Yep. Skull to finish the Kangaskhan off. Uh, in case the Hydro Pump missed, um, assuming Rapid Dash doesn't go down, the ideal situation is to set up another X special attack, go to plus four special attack, Skull the Kangaskhan, and that all but guarantees that it goes down. Uh, but this is part two of Victory Road. Juggler Nelson, uh, Hypno, uh, you're getting very sleepy. <laughs> Has Hypnosis. Uh, again, setting up an X special here. Uh, goes for headbutt, thankfully. Leggy probably just going to double skull this due to low special attack. Uh, does get the trade, yes. oh, the, the no. trade status uh, <laughs> burn. You don't want to see because status lag sleep. You don't want to yeah. see because you need to heal it. Uh, both, basically, it was kind of a, eh, you whiff sometimes. Uh, Good news, if it's any, you know, small compensation. Um, Good news is that it doesn't go for Hypnosis twice in a row once it lands it. <laughs> yeah, it, if it sees that you're already status with sleep, um, Hypno does have Dream Eater, it doesn't do anything if you're not asleep, which you will you will never be, uh, assuming that you have Awakenings and Full Heals to spare. Uh, Zimlik also getting put to Slept here um, on turn one. Uh, Going to heal that with an awakening. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't get a second sleep due to Hypno being at full health, needing to take this out in two hits. Falls asleep again. This is. Oh, no. Oh, Victory uh, Road. Yeah, something. <laughs> Victory Road, why do you do this? Again, abilities are not in this game. Starmie does not inherently know Insomnia. Uh, do have to use awakenings and the worst part is there is one more trainer in this in this gauntlet that can still put you to sleep hopefully zimlix has some extra full heals just in case in the back pocket can you imagine 
like abilities for Starmie being a thing, you get hit with like an Illuminate Starmie, and that like you know <laughs> spawns more Pokemon or some dumb stuff oh, like no. that. I'll be honest, I don't know abilities of Starmie. Leggy making the Alexa Pass, the one trainer skip that you're allowed to do in Victory yeah. in this category, does because it very you cleanly. Need, yeah, you don't need a mount to get that skip. Technically, you're yep. not on the mount while you skip it. Yep, the uh, you can just. You just hug the little inside portion of that ramp and skip her just fine. Entering Caroline, uh, making sure to approach Caroline and essentially dismount Rapidash before talking to her, as we've seen. Uh, hitboxes and talking are a thing. Uh, gets put to sleep again for Leggy. Uh, is at plus two right now, so all she has to do is simply hit the pump. I said simply hit the pump gets the range if that was a range uh and is totally good uh let's see what her stats are for level 51 123 special attack zimlik hitting alexa skip just fine no no optionals for zimlik today uh goodness is so close zimlik entering caroline <laughs> just as leggy is about to exit uh after she sculpts the arcanine Zimlik gets a clean fight here. Could definitely catch up significantly. Sets up the X special attack. Goes for the Psychic instead of the Lovely Kiss. And being at a higher level range means simply hit the pump. Crits the pump, even. Securing <laughs> that range. Hell yeah. All nice. right. It's basically two Pokemon and a little bit of movement separate these two runners anything goes still yeah, i'll be paying attention to these runners paces as well coming out of victory road e4 champ tends to take anywhere between like 14 to 16 minutes depending so these runners uh assuming like well, whoever ends up being in second place for this run is definitely in contention to advance on time uh, based off of based off of the current pace. Yeah, as we mentioned before, the time to beat currently for uh, two best second places is a three eighteen seventeen. Um, and both of these runners are well within the striking distance of that, if not better. Uh, I love pushing boulders around. Ah, uh, yes. The classic push <laughs> boulder 20 <laughs> times for 37 seconds. <laughs> yep. Fun, fun, fun. We're recycling another bit here. <laughs> I mean, what else are we supposed to do? You're just pushing a boulder. <laughs> Rocks, how do they work? A Sisyphean <laughs> tail, if you wish. Except that you're not continuously pushing the boulder. We don't... This is not boulder percents. This is uh, finish the game. It is a nicely sculpted boulder, I will say. Whoever Pioneers decided to... Pioneers used to run... No, how does that quote go? The pioneers used to ride these boys for hours. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Leggy exiting at 133 roundabouts on screen. Zimlik taking care of uh, Pokemaniac uh, Dawson, I think is his name. Yes. Uh, second Pokemon onto Blastoise. As Leggy is prepping to enter the E4, uh, considering how close these runners are, it'll be interesting to see what approach they decide to take. There's always the standard safe E4 strats, keep Rapidash, uh, Dodrio, etc. in your party uh, to second controller a couple fights. So Luck exiting at 2.12. Uh, so again, about 40 seconds difference separates the two currently. Uh, Leggy electing to keep Rapidash along for the ride 
is solidly enough ahead to seeing E4 plus champ versus one controllering it uh, is a difference of about 25 seconds, give or take, depending on like how Agatha goes, etc. So we'll see if Simlik decides to play risky to make up some time, or see if RNG falls in his favor. Luggy though, entering the Lorelei fight. Uh, knowing, again, these stars have a really bad special attack. Uh, the safe bet is to go to plus four. Zimlik dropping the Rapidash off. Okay, we're going to see 2C versus 1C here. Uh, it's uh, Interesting choice. Zimlik going to try and make up that lost time to... Uh, or dropping Rapidash to gain some ground here. So we're going to see two very different... Uh, approaches. A uh, little misclick on Leggy's side. Unfortunately, clicks Scald instead of Thunderbolt. Gets burned. Unfortunately, a little bit punished for that. Uh, Zimlik also entering the same fight as Leggy finishes off Dugong. This is going to get real close, folks. It's going to get real close real quick. Uh, Zimlik does have a level advantage on Leggy, albeit it's not that much of an advantage. I don't think he can hit any specific ranges any better. Leggy going to plus six, going to sculpt the string, bring it down. Zimlik likely going to do the same. Going to Thunderbolt the Dugong. And then either Scald or Hydro Pump the, the Jinx as it comes out. I wasn't cat paying attention to see if Zimlik went to plus four or plus six. Uh, if plus six, Scald is guaranteed. If plus four, likely needs to hit a pump. Um, and that Lapras could have been a range. Chat's seeing plus six, so both of them are taking the the safer fight of uh, the Lorelei. Leggy exiting at 39 seconds on the clock. 4.39. Uh, Zimlik will be a little bit more behind just due to uh, depositing Rapidash, but we'll gain that ground back by the time uh, Agatha and Lance happen. So yeah. we'll see how how that difference unfolds very shortly. Such a close race. Like it God. is so close. I respect the play. Zimlik understanding that it's a little bit behind. It needs to gain that ground by uh, depositing Rapidash, going for the risky play despite his star. Um, one thing to note too, because of that extra rare candy, it is very possible that we'll see Zimlek get turnarounds on Bruno. Turnarounds being Starmie looks back for approval, takes two seconds for Pokemon. Lucky getting Stealth Rock instead of Earthquake on Onyx means that she will not be in faint range for Hitmonlee. Uh, Stealth Rock will only occur if you have another Pokemon in your party uh, to set up Stealth Rock on because it's a it's an entry hazard. You take damage on switch in. Leggy getting to level 52. We're going to see 127 special attack on her star. Uh, definitely going to be two controlling that. Uh, this is going to be interesting from Zimlik's side. Uh, that is 15 HP for Starmie, uh, which is... <sighs> <laughs> I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Zimlik's going to psychic through the rest of this fight, and it's going to be completely fine. I will not say it, chat. Until it, until it either does or doesn't happen. <laughs> Could make twenty bucks right now. <laughs> Could make twenty bucks. <laughs> I I would much Could rather see twenty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> I would much rather see Zimlik get through this fight unscathed, but the unsaid move. Uh, I was not paying attention to Zimlik's defense stat. Uh, we're gonna see it on the screen. 35 or uh, 53 defense 102 that's pretty substantial i would say that uh even if hitmonlee does get it off zim like is favorable to live it um leggy going to agatha right now healing up starmie for for the agatha fight everyone some chatters for like a uh, faint bless the starmie costume all right we're good you can all breathe now. <laughs> Fate does not exist. Fate oh. not real. Zimlik's heart must be beating so hard right now. 
yeah, couldn't even 2C it there. Um, you do have the option to heal. The other moves that Hitmonlee has, I believe, are Rock Slide and Brick Break, uh, none of which can uh, be a detriment to you. Leggy getting turn one power of love on Glare wow. uh, means that. Okay. Does mean that you have to go for Psychic here. She's going to set up an Execute on the Weezing as the Weezing is going to get one Thunderbolt off on, on Leggy. Uh, assuming no Paralyze, should be able to get through the fight just fine. If paral uh, Paralysis does happen, um, she still has a full restore in the back pocket. No para. Totally fine here. No para. Psychic down the line. Noticing three Psychics on Leggy's screen, though. Um, must have accidentally hit a Psychic somewhere where she shouldn't have, whether that was the Lickitung or the Onyx. Um, going to need to Thunderbolt the Golbat in this scenario. Uh, I'm not sure if this Thunderbolt is going to be a range. It likely will be. Uh, might opt to... The safe play here, bring out 2C, which is exactly what she's going to do here. Going to probably expect uh, Thunderbolt the Golbat. Uh, or, yep, Thunderbolt from Starmie, and then we're going to see her go into her bag, and then heal. Heal is also totally fine, um, but Luggy, thankfully, understanding that this is a, a total range. Uh, Zimlik having Dodri in the party, I didn't see him bring it in. I'm not sure where it was, whether it was before. Not sure where the Dodri <laughs> came from either yeah. myself. Uh, but this is also another alternate way where you can push through the Agatha fight. Um, Dodrio will bait out Weezing's Thunderbolts, ensuring that it comes out second as opposed to Gengar, which has Shadow Ball and, uh, and Sludge Bomb. Uh, Leggy ensuring Leggy's that... Leggy sitting there, yeah, on an ether for Psychic. Yeah, I think she was trying to calculate out how many Psychics that she would have needed to progress through the rest of the fight, uh, or the rest of the E4 gauntlet. Uh, yes. Should be totally fine, especially if you decide to, say, Scald, Aerodactyl, Thunderbolt, Gyarados, etc. But just ensuring that she will make it through the rest of the game, don't fault her for that. Um, especially on in such a close race where any misstep could mean that you are uh, relegated to second place. Uh, that was such a close race too. <laughs> but yeah, Leggy but... would have nine Psychics left, I believe. After that fight, because uh, you know, Ether uh, gives you ten, then down to nine. But yeah, Lance time for Leggy. Yes, please spam pants. Must defeat Lance. Two uh, <laughs> C is all but guaranteed here. What you'll see for the safe fight is XP turn one. Depending on what Cedra does here, Cedra's going to hyper beam. Uh, Leggy going to elect to bring in the Rat Dash here. Uh, an alternate version could be to set up an, another X special and go down the line through Cedra, Aerodactyl, Summon Gyarados. Uh, understandably, because of the stars that these runners have, going to just play out the fight as normal, boost with Rapid Ash. Uh, Zimlet going to save before save Lance as well. Before Lance, yeah. yeah. Totally respectable, just in case something goes haywire. Uh, but as long as the script is followed, should be totally okay here as well. There is a script for Lance, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, if everything goes according to script. <laughs> yeah, uh, the the risky version of the fight is just to one controller it, set up fully on the Seedra, risking Hyper Beam crit, and then going down the line. Uh, the only way that really works out is if you have a favorable Psychic range on Lance. Uh, Lance is guaranteed, or on Dragonite rather, guaranteed at 140 special attack. Neither of these runners are going to hit that in the slightest, as we see on Leggy's screen. Starmie leveling up to 53. Only 130 special attack. That is a... A Starmie of all time. <laughs> that is a Starmie. 130 is a 10 and 16 psychic range on the Dragonite. It's even a 15 and 16 psychic range on the Gyarados, if I might add. Uh, well, at, at level 30, 52, so would have been fine there. At least the Dragonite doesn't have multi scale. Haha. -ha. <laughs> <laughs> Abilities. Yay, bits. Okay, one more. Just, just one more. Just one more. But of course. Um, Dragonite down. Dragonite down. Just s simply hit the range. Yep. 
it always seems to occur that like you play the safe fight with a bad stormy you end up paying the range anyway you play a risky fight with like a decent stormy, God stormy and, and then you get you, crit yeah, off you by hyper dirt. Beam. yeah you eat dirt yeah. <laughs> this, this is known <laughs> Uh, Zimlet going to finish up this fight, uh, going to Hyper Potion the Starmie, bring it to full HP, uh, likely going to finish off the Dragonite with a combination of Psychic Drill Pack. Dodrio should outspeed the Dragonite, shouldn't be too bad here. We're going to see... Did Vicky say before champ? Did not I, I don't believe she did. 2C yeah, champ did. tends to be exceptionally safe. Uh, there, is, there are four different ways this fight can go. This fight is only really bad if a crit happens and a Pokemon dies, uh, which is very unlikely. Uh, Starmie being 54 on... I forgot to see uh, the words. I think Zimlick Star was 135 special attack, uh, but going to likely play it safe on Champ anyway. But here's Champ. Uh, Mega Pidgeot is a thing. Leads with the strongest Pokemon in Trace's arsenal here. Uh, Air Slash is very scary. Um, it's Air Cutter that is the higher crit chance. Air Slash, all it does is flinch you. Uh, but Air Slash onto Rapidash is totally expected here and what you want to see. Uh, in this way, uh, Starmie's going to go to plus four here. Pidgeot's going to take out Rapidash with Quick Attack, presumably, or not. Okay, this is an interesting development. Uh, yeah. Rapidash living here means that the imp you're going to need to input Rapidash's stomp essentially for the next four Pokemon. Uh, aside that's from cringe. yeah, that's yeah. uh, that's a time loss that slowly accumulates. Yeah, it should get another expectually. Those. Yeah, Pikachu six. will go to plus six on this fight uh, just due to the fact that Jolteon has higher special defense than Raichu has in Eevee version. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Leggy being having uh, Ori KO two Pokemon means that she should clinch out the win here. It does click Thunderbolt on the slow roll, so all she has to do is psychic down the remaining three Pokemon. Zimlik entering the fight as well. Uh, Pidgeot going to take out the Dodrio with an Air Slash, uh, which is very expected for Eevee. Uh, go set up one more X Special Attack to plus four. Um, and we'll see a Air Slash from Pidgeot, and then no Thunderbolt it down. No crit. Yeah, uh, I know Dynam was saying that Air Cutter is the plus crit uh, chance move, but you'd swear that Air Slash also has that hidden yeah, effect you... in this game. Exactly. When you're this close in and you just see crits consistently from Pidgeot, you... sometimes you think that the two moves are, uh, are swapped They became around. one, yeah. Exactly. But yeah. alright, Rapidash should be the last one on Leggy's side. Yeah. Rapidash going down means GG's for Leggy. Indeed, what a race. Zimlick, GG's. Only four Pokemon behind. Uh, has been such a close race throughout this, in this... This has been a fantastic race. Both our runners performed splendidly. Uh, Leggy just coming out ahead in the end by a mere minute, if that's. But yeah, great gameplay, great execution for both runners. Um, I'm so glad that this was like a good documentary style of run because we saw the version differences come into play, different strats come into play, uh, 2C in one place, 1C in another. Um, it's sad though that these Starmies were so freaking mid, <laughs> but even with that, I think our runners uh, managed to find a way to get the best out of those Starmies. And yeah, four Pokemon difference on a run that's been, you know, neck to neck pretty much all the way through. It's uh it's just a lot. Yeah. Fantastic yeah. showcase. So something to note here, Leggy uh just finishing according to race time, three sixteen fifty two. Zimlik should be finishing uh according to the on screen timer around a high three seventeen, which would clinch him to well, not clinch specifically, there are still other races to be had, but he will bump Pengi for that uh second uh second best place finish assuming that our timers are close to accurate yeah ggs to leggy ggs to zimlek GG. we'll see if they decide to take a breather maybe join us in chat for a little bit of an interview uh but honestly 
amazing runs from both of our runners and an amazing race to boot. Like, honestly, I would venture to say this is the closest race we've had so far, just overall. And looks like Zimlik coming in on race time with a 317.37. Uh, does clear the screen this time. Congratulations, uh, <laughs> Zimlik joining us on, on comms right now. Uh, how are you doing, Zimlik? Congratulations Ooh. for uh, bumping Pengi for that uh, that advancement slot so far. Still, still yet to be decided, but at least for now, how does it feel to... To feels finish pretty, out that run, feels pretty good. Um, it was good to get a PB. That was pretty good. Um, up until then, I had like a three twenty one, so dropped a good bit of time off. Oh of yeah, it. congrats on the PB, Jeez, dude! Like, huge. Didn't it's, even think about yeah. that. This huge. <laughs> yeah, so that was good. Um, but yeah, the first half of the run felt really good. Then I felt like I was getting more tired towards the end, making mistakes, but not bad, not bad. Okay, yeah. I need to. I need to hear from the trainer himself. Um, thoughts on that starving. That Stormy sucked. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, once I used the Rare Candy on Rapidash on accident, I was like, well, crap. If my Stormy's good, I can at least get by. And I saw the Stormy, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, I, I don't think yeah. any of us even oh, noticed that you uh, oh, yeah, that's why I had to go candy. To, that's why I had to go to the Sylphco candy, the extra one on floor 10. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, I need to ask you. So I have faith that it was deliberate. But I still need to ask, uh, you picked up the Max Revive before picking up the Rare Candy. Was that intentional? Was that like a safe no. thing? No. I, oh, okay. I knew there was a Rare Candy up there somewhere. <laughs> I didn't know which ball it was. And you took the one, the one in three chance and then you made it a one in two, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was not on purpose. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, good good, uh, good knowledge, though, that uh, there is a backup candy in, in Sylph 10 f So yeah. good on you for recognizing that. But yeah, no, it felt good. Yeah, and now we have we have Leggy on comms as well. Congrats on the win, Leggy. Thank you. I that was sure a run. <laughs> a run of all time. Yep. Yeah. Y'all yeah. wanna talk about how bad both of your stars were? <laughs> oh. You can bond over it. How, how bad does the star? star made the sip? <laughs> yeah, so mine didn't outspeed uh, the Rabidash on Blaine. Ooh. Mm -hmm. um, but then I also had, like, one of the special attacks of all time. And yet I just hit every range. I don't yeah, understand. Nice. <laughs> yeah, we saw you hit the range on Kangaskhan. We saw you hit the range on Dragonite. Yeah, really, the answer is just simply hit, am I right? Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was, that was dream. <laughs> That, that was an underachiever star me, but, you know, Friday night, just wanted to clock out, and it was like, all right, yeah, I'm going to hit every single range, and then we out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were we were holding our breath for Leggy Star in particular because of that atrocious speed. We were just, like, uh, eyeing that star speed at level 50. Please be 128. Please be 128. Please be 128. Yep. And then it just barely hit. Um. Dang. So no no rival five pocket sand cringe today thankfully. Yeah. I don't know I don't know if we're gonna be um look the runners are gonna be sharing their star me stats like after the race or if you get that on stream or not. Yeah, I'll I'll share it after the race. But yeah, okay, that was good. Yeah, where do you go to do that again? Uh, uh, you'll go to. Go ahead. Oh, it's um you go past Diglett Cave all the way to the route before the Snorlax and it's upstairs. Ah, uh, got it. Yeah, just make sure you have 30 Pokemon caught by that time, all right? Um, <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's 50, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it's, it's 30 for this particular uh, uh, aid. Okay. I know it's like 50 in like one of the other games, but... Gotcha. Yeah. Um, but the other thing that had me sweating was I misinputted uh, <laughs> on one of the Victory Road fights and accidentally used an extra Psychic. Yeah. I did that as well! Oh, hey! I Twinsies. psyched the Onyx at the very end. Uh, Twinsies. Yeah, God, what, what was it for me? I think it was it was Caroline's uh, Golbat, I think. Uh, mm. Yeah, pulling out the, the 2C when you had realized that uh, you probably might not have hit the Thunderbolt range on Golbat. 
due to your Starmie special attack was a was a really good play. Yeah, I was good. looking at the numbers and going, "Oh God, <laughs> I might miss this range." Okay, let's go slightly scuffed two C strats. Let's go slightly scuffed two C strats. But good on you for recognizing that in the moment for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also I just want to ask: um, Are we also counting fire blast misses? As part of the hundred. <laughs> oh, points? that rapid ash. That was. God, oh, no. awful. Oh, that was so, yeah, that was awful. That was yeah. so depressing. Yeah, Painful. we were we were saying on comms, it was one hundred percent the correct decision for you to go for fire blast due to Joe Duo not being involved. Yeah. It's just really unfortunate be, due to that fifteen percent miss that you had to spend so much time reviving Starmie. But thankfully, your at, at the very least, your XP route wasn't affected because of it. Um, mm -hmm. And now you're ready to run call if you ever want to dabble on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, join the Look, join the call runs. They have a five percent better accuracy on their main move than we do. You know, on the one <laughs> hand, fair, oh, yeah, it's pre nerf <laughs> fire blast. Nah, no way. <laughs> Ain't no yeah. way. But on the other hand, if I'm going to run any game with rages like that, I'm going to stick to Kanto and go for fire red leaf green. Huh. Heck uh, yeah, cans brave. <laughs> oh, also pointing out in chat, uh, your Leggy, your run in particular gave us the best possible piece of advice that we could have ever asked for. Throw balls, not the game. <laughs> <laughs> Conic yeah. sign, yep. Truly I... one of the signs and pieces of advice of all time. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, wait, my 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 formal apology to Leggy. So on Jesse and James 2. Mm -hmm. I was doing a bid that we sing ha of we sing heaven levitate, and I'm like, oh no, leggy, don't don't click the drill run onto the we sing. It has levitate, and then you missed the drill run, and I felt so <laughs> bad about it. Yeah, but okay. but yeah, I totally curse that. That's totally on, my be. On the one hand, I, I I will pretend to be angry for a second there, but on the other hand, that's the funniest thing I've heard all night. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go back and clip it. It's just so good. My timing was a, a timing of all time, yep. <laughs> yeah, but Leggy, congratulations again on clinching your advancement to round three, and then also Zimlek for knocking Pengi for uh, advancing on time. Uh, if none of the other other runners beat your your current time of a three seventeen thirty seven, you will definitely advance to round three. Oh, cool. uh, I guess we'll start with Leggy. How are you feeling uh, about your potential matchups going into round three, and um, what that holds for you? So you know, honestly, going into this, I was fully expecting to be you, you know facing. Uh, the chopping board, uh, but you know, after round one, ma making my way into uh, pot one of the lower bracket, I managed to get you know a certain amount of confidence. I'm still not sure I'm going to make it past round three at all, but I'm just really happy I've managed to make it as deep as I have, and I'm going to do my best to put up the best possible fight I can. Oh, as, yeah. you sh as you should, for sure. Yeah. And Zimlik, uh, there are, let's see, I'm trying to count the, the runs. There's one, two, two more uh, lower bracket runs. How are you feeling about being on the bubble? You put up some really like solid, solid times uh, just getting into the game, just learning the game. Uh, and you do have the potential for going into round three. How are you feeling kind of being on that cusp of greatness going into that? Um, I wasn't necessarily expecting to get past this round, so if I get into round three, that'd be pretty sweet. Um, having only played it for about a month, I don't know, I started learning it right after I signups ended, so I'm feeling pretty good. Heck It'll be yeah. good to be there in the third, in the third round. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Hopefully we'll see more of you, yeah. even if it's not in the tournament, at least uh, around the, the PSR community, because it's been, it's been great to see new runners getting to the game for sure. Yeah. Oh, I also found my Starmie. It had awful special attack. I posted oh, in no. Discord. Yep. Oh, <laughs> the, the sure a lot of okays. Yep. 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 I have also posted my Starmie. Um, I've got good <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, man. 
there you have. Uh, cool. Well, again, you both put up a fantastic race. It was so close from start to finish all the way through. I would say that it's the closest race we've had in the tournament thus far, Definitely. just overall. Plenty um, of moments where you guys were synced up. Uh, I believe it was Archer 1, where you were literally synced up to the frame. <laughs> oh my god. Nice. Yeah, yep. Frame catches the, the entire thing. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch this one back. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was a great one, for sure. Rewatch it. It's fantastic. Uh, do, you, do either of you runners have anything to say before we move on to looking at our remaining matches for this round? Uh, yeah, so I just want to give a shout out to Jordan, who is doing tech for uh, yet another race. Um, Jordan, go to this. Yeah, Jordan's doing great. Could True. not have done this tournament at all without you. Thank you so much for all your hard work. Um, yes. And then shout outs to the three of you for putting on what a show that I cannot wait to go back and listen to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having us. It's been a pleasure, for sure. Yep. And yeah, just shout out to the tech team and everybody who's participating in comms and stuff. It's been it's been great seeing or meeting everybody and listening to everything. It's pretty great. That it has been. Shout outs to everybody. Shout outs to everybody. Shout outs to both yeah. of you guys. Uh, moving on. Um, yeah. I don't know. What else to say? <laughs> well, what is next is more matches, in fact. Hell we have, yeah, a, tri we have a triple header tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be a jam-packed full of Let's Go from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. Uh, first up, we have J Tattles versus Sheep versus Drywall. Um, starting at 12 p.m. Eastern, please translate to your local time zone. Uh, and so two first are going to be two uh, yeah. lower bracket races, followed up by Furious versus Phoenix Melior at uh, 4 p.m. or 4.30 Eastern. I can definitely read 24-hour notation. <laughs> um, and then later on uh, will be myself, Dynam, versus Headbob versus CyJ, uh at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, please note the channels that these are all on. Uh, the two lower bracket matches, J Tattle, Sheep, and Drywall, along with Furious and Phoenix Miller, will both be on the other Pokemon Speedruns TV channel that you may have come from, PS uh, Pokemon Speedruns TV. Uh, whereas the final race for tomorrow will be uh, hosted on this channel, uh, PS Pokemon Speedruns TV 2. These are all going to be fantastic races. What are, your, uh, what are all your thoughts about how these races are going to shape up? I don't know how I'm going to keep track of all the races. There's too many. There's so many races. Yeah, it's always going to be a busy day for me. <laughs> but I want to say Tattles, Phoenix, Head Bob. Going against my fellow co commentator here. But, Understandable. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Some tough competition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think all of these have the potential to be quite close. We'll see what happens. For sure. We'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Uh, and then, also not scheduled, or not shown on the schedule, uh, there will be a final race on the 9th, which is going to be uh, Wave Warrior, Trevaria, and Quo to round out round 2. Uh, draws to come at a time to be determined afterwards. Yeah, it's looking like it's going to be the same day after the race, but we shall see. Yep, we will keep you posted for that. Uh, but anyway, uh, until then, it's, I believe it's time to sign off. Greta, Nick, it's been great having both of you on comms along with me. This has been a great ride. Do either of you have... Uh, Anything to say before we send it over to Tech to raid somebody? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having us. It's been hella fun. Yeah, thanks to thanks to the crew, thanks to the runners, uh, thanks to Tech. Thank you to everybody who's currently watching. No uh, thanks to Starmy. No thanks to Starmy. <laughs> Hopefully we see much better Starmies in the races to come. 
Uh, but until then, to all of you who are watching, thank you for watching. Please stick around for the weekend. We've got some fantastic races, as we've already mentioned. Uh, so until then, we will see you all then. Have a good one.